And hello again, everyone who may or may not be watching this, which, to be fair, is probably just me remembering what happened so I can write a uh, summary like this. Today we join our heroes at the end of a bloody fight. After bringing in the killer of the Redstream family, they decide to follow up on a second work opportunity. Some deep sea diving for one Captain Splitter Diggs. After a few last minute shopping trips, the party set sail and learned they would be diving on the wreck of a revenue boat that had gone down in a freak storm a few weeks prior. About half a day's sail up the coast. Or, it might be a day and a half, can't remember. I'll tell you later. After a brief and uneventful trip to the work site, the party were provided with the appropriate equipment and the ability to breathe underwater and survive the depths. And so they plunged into the warm waters as they grew colder and colder as they went deeper and deeper, 300 feet or more down to the wreck below. After a very brief bit of scouting, the party was set upon by a sea hag and her drowned servants, former crew of the ship. After a long battle, consisting of a lot of why didn't I bring a trident or a spear, and more so of tactical crab control. Oh, uh, in fact, the battle was so long that the dungeon master got exhausted and the Minotaur tapped out. However, they were victorious, and thus we find them here today, amidst the bodies underwater. And I will no. say, as I'm sorry, I only got the tail end of that, which sucks. Uh. I'm sorry, Wade. Would you like me to repeat it? No. <clears throat> well, what did you hear? The, the probably the tactical crab control and the Minotaur tapping out and all that. Yeah. Well, bas no. basically, you guys remember early on, you had been given two work opportunities at the pier, and you had been told of the murder, or rather, that the guard might need help, and you went to go investigate the murder, and you were given the opportunity to do some salvage diving for the other captain. You took care of the murder case, so then you went salvage diving. You had a fight down here with the sea hag, who I could bring the bodies back, but I don't care to, currently is being devoured by the sharks that are circling overhead and there and around the boat. And you find yourselves outside the sea hag's cave, which from the outside is very hard to notice. It's just a rocky structure that kind of fills, fills the north uh, left side, northwest side of your map, just off, to this, off there. A green, eerie glow shimmering through what appears at first glance to be a cave entrance. But as you step through it, and I'm going to put you through there, Lotus, you find that it's more of a wall. And you find yourself in an air-filled chamber. The shimmering image of your friends still outside, behind you, out before they've entered the cave. And you guys have free movement. You are down here looking for the gold, the crates, the things that went missing. The crew is not part of your ta your task. If you have, may, of course, look for anything else of value, there are no looting things here on this map today. The Sea Hag's lair itself is kind of a morbid affair. Tossed about are various bones from most manner of creature. <clears throat> Shells are piled high in corners, or it's, their inner, or it's cracked out and sucked clean. A large I wonder what's pot. in this cauldron. I would not touch it. Tool it, of a monster. it smells like rotten fish mixed with brimstone. Ew. And it boils and bubbles, uh, seemingly with no heat being applied to it. It is this irid iridescent green color that shimmers with each minor movement and occasional <laughs> bubble form on the surface and pops, splashing a tiny bit out. Is it the it, source of the light for the room? So, it is the source of the light in the immediate area. There are actually, if you zoom out it's easier to see there are actually three what appear to be arcane candles that are lit on the table and chest yeah. okay mm. the inside That's of this cave definitely table. tells you a hag lift do we well, see any of the uh, bullion from the uh the I was trade ship say, I was well, you say, know is, there, is that map you know, assets actually there or no everything you see is actually there Okay. There's a pile of gold with a couple of gems sticking out of it, next to a rather ornate-looking throne in one corner. A series of barrels, which are, well, you don't know what's in them. Small chests, a larger chest in one corner, and three heavy-duty strong, strong boxes that appear to be marked with the symbol of the city of Gerdan. Likely <clears throat> some of the gold you were sent to recover. However, you were told there would be six chests. And, and we only see three here? 
You see yeah. three plus one that might be that's open next to the throne, but it doesn't appear to have the same mark. I'm going uh, to I pick up a gold. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I pick up a gold piece and examine it. Does it look like it's inscribed with the uh, the city's uh, seal on it? Now, the particular piece you pick up is old and weathered. It's been underwater for so long, it's even got a little bit of, fo like, at this point, just a skeleton of coral growing off of one side. Shipwreck gold from who knows how f long ago. I, uh... And in fact, all the gold in that particular region appears to be of a similar vintage. These are... This is old. I look over at Torin. It looks like she's been hoarding for quite some time. There's no markings on this that look apparent to the bullion we, look, we were assigned to look for. I agree. Dead. This we can stuff at least use this. I guess. I agree. This stuff looks ancient. Maybe we can trade it for some value. Mm. Agreed. Gold is still gold. It can be smelted down and turned into proper currency. Or we can make it into jewelry and sell it whatever we need. Let's... Maybe a magic item for one of these users. Well, Let... the other ch mm. uh, yes, uh, Sir Forrester. Let's, let's go ahead and load it into the crates. That's way I I can I still control the crabs at least till the end of the day. We can easily Use load everything crab. to load it all into the net and have it Along brought the line back of crabs. up. Uh, exactly. I. <clears throat> what do these gems look like? Are they like cut? Are they raw? They appear to be mostly cut. You see a couple of topaz. You see what looks like a fairly sizable aquamarine. None of them are particularly precious stones. They all seem to be kind of secondary gemstones. Uh, I take a small aquamarine gemstone. Okay. For no Nothing other reason than it is one of my favorite. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll pop one into your... Um, Balgoris will be... Just, I will, uh, I will just, out of character reminder that you are splitting shares with the salvage crew for any additional things found. So. Mm -hmm. Balgoris is agreeable to this. I mean, it's fair. Yep. Yeah, it'll look good in the pommel of my glaive, if I can find a smith. Yeah, it's right. probably like... It's a sizable stone. It. It's like five, Ooh. six carat. Simple, like, oh, kind of regular cut, but... Very nice. Style. Oh, mm -hmm. there it goes. I got her. Never mind. I got her unstuck. Um, I, was just, I, I guess I will shovel sure. the gold and start helping everybody load everything out of here that we can take. Uh, are we going? Does anybody want to inspect the cask that are in the corner? Yeah, that's gonna. That was gonna be my next action. See if there's anything in them by popping the top and sniffing it, like the top yeah. part here. Yeah. As you go in, well, in this barrel actually seems to be fairly new compared to many of the other things that are down here. And as you pull it open, you get the strong scent of a wine. Whoa. Possibly a rather old wine, but definitely red. I see you took the con I see you took the con line literal. Well, you said it, so I had to do it. I, well, of course. No, one of them mm. said it. <laughs> Hang on, I'm trying to find the fucking... We got casks of red wine, it smells like here. At least Not one as a drinker myself, at least of that vintage, as you clearly no, know. No, but this might be good value. You grab the aquamarine. We'll up on the conga line, and we just start rolling stuff over to the crabs, <laughs> and they start pulling you know, <laughs> It takes several crabs to a barrel. These are these are probably 100-gallon barrels. They're fairly sized. I was say, crabs with barrels. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's probably taking two we'll crabs to a barrel. Yeah, when same. When you bring them out, through, once you get them outside of the room and into the water, they feel much lighter, as they're actually somewhat buoyant, or at least more neutrally so. They certainly won't float to the surface, but they're a lot easier to carry. So basically, they get rigged up and dragged up with the rest of the shit? Yeah. Yeah, we, all we have to do is get everything back over to the net. I could turn into a giant seahorse or a shark. <laughs> no, you cannot, actually. Why not? Because not you're not yet a high enough level in order to use uh, anything with a swim speed. So, why in the hell is it showing that I can? Here's the conga line of crabs for our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hang on, hang on, give me one second, because I had them all in the corner because I put a sound thing there. So let me just uh, just pop that there so you can hear it. Do you have a good nap? 
I'm gonna mosey on through the ship. Uh, taking a look at the upper decking. Yeah. Uh, no. The ship itself appears to have been very violently brought down to the seabed. Not only is it broken up as it landed, more or less directly on top of the stag's lair, but you see a lot of snapped rigging. The masts themselves are unaccounted for, just a broken stump in each place. Same goes for the sails. They likely floated away far more buoyant. I wonder in if a kraken got a hold of this thing. Um, what in the world is a kraken? You may make an investigation check and see if you can determine the cause of sinking. Sure, why not? I got a plus two to investigation. Normal. Hey, Ooh. there you go. Good job. Can ask an animal. Yeah. It, I wanted to use the sharks in combat, but, you know, somebody fucking made them sk get scared off. <laughs> oh, they're happily the devouring the results. So yeah. Do I see any sucklers or something that might indicate? You don't. So, looking over the ship, you don't see anything that seems to indicate a kraken or other creature attack. Most of the damage appears to have happened very suddenly, almost as if the ship was taken was overturned by a massive wave. Perhaps you see a lot of things have been piled. So no battle damage. No, no evident signs of battle damage. No. But as you're kind of standing on the upper works or swimming about it, you're more or less standing, you do happen to notice that much of the cargo appears to have been spilled out on the other side of the ship from where you approached, and that you see a very long drag mark leading out into the depths off to the west. Oh, I don't like that. Because aren't we missing a few? You're missing yes, three whole ships. And these... Uh, this looks like it could have been carved out by something heavy dragging it. Oh, damn it. I believe, uh, what is the species called? Um, Triton? I, I never wanted to hear that name under here. I've heard that they can be quite agreeable. Uh, Maybe they just saw to salvage or working with the hag in some shape, form, or capacity. Maybe they rolled the hag? Rolls. They might not be hostile, seeing as how we have killed the major infestation of this area. I will, I will say also, Hockey, with that roll, um, it's kind of hard to tell. You're not exactly, because you rolled really high, it's not exactly a science that you're familiar with. But if you had to guess, you'd say that these drag marks are very recent. Things tend to settle out flat on the seabed very quickly. And it looks like it's recently disturbed, is what you're getting. At. It looks like your your gut tells you is probably within the, if not within the last day, then possibly even more recent. It looks like these drag marks are uh, recent, maybe a day or two. I, I'm not too sure, but look, the sediment looks different than the other. And uh, from what I know about the ocean, it should settle quickly with the overhead current. <coughs> Trying to act like a dumbass and <laughs> not bring modern knowledge into the game. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna go uh, cast animal friendship and speak to animals, and I'm gonna go ask the local wildlife. Uh, which, Fuck you guys. Which, which one are you gonna cast? Both. Uh, they're both concentration, I believe. Yeah. Oh, no, really? animal friendship is not concentration. No, it is. No, it's not. It is not. <laughs> I to make sure that they're happy with my In Pathfinder, it is. Yeah, uh, who would you like to- what would you like to cast Animal Friendship on? Let's start with that. You said there were sharks. There are, there are three hunter sharks, or some other variety that are currently... ...seem to have more or less eaten their fill, and are more just lazily drifting about over the bones of many of the sea spawn that you destroyed. They're okay, kind of well, I'm gonna cast... ...passively. I'm gonna cast Animal Friendship, and <clears throat> I'm gonna cast Talk to Animals, so that I can fucking ask them. Which animal are you- so an... That's a great idea. Animal friendship, though, only works on one animal, so which one do you choose? Uh, is there a di You gotta give me a difference between the fucking blue one? I don't fucking... <laughs> you just one shark tells to... truth and one yeah, shark tells Yeah, go lies. close to one. <laughs> Where are they? The one with you the star the over its eye, fuck it. You can- I'm looking at your view, you can see two. <laughs> yeah, we can say... Oh, up to here, okay. Yeah, you see yeah. those things with the plus 15? I'll cast this one. As, as you as you kind of as you kind of walk along on this 
broken wreck, the shark kind of stops what it's doing and looks at you inquisitively. It slowly just sits there, laying the current area in its gills as it kind of just looks looks at you. You have its attention. And it doesn't seem to see you as food or a threat at the moment. Okay, well, I'm going to cast... Uh, I'm still going to cast Animal Friendship on it and then yep. speak to animals. Yep, just uh, make sure you click them to show us. Do what? Like, actually uh, click the spell to cast it. Oh! I thought you said it was this- he saw, he told me this was all fucking RP! Yes, but that doesn't mean we're not using the features. Oh, yeah. okay. It just means there's no you, combat. Maybe. Click- click the X on that. Oh. Click the X up top. It's supposed to be fucking prepared only. It is. I'm okay. saying- They're no, both no, no, prepared. No. I'm looking at your spell sheet. Yeah. You could have just clicked the spell on the little, uh, hot bar. You have a, I'll you, show you, you after. You, I'll show her after. Yeah. Do I have to target it? You, you don't have to for this. Okay. I understand. I know which ones. Just click them out so that, and do it so that we keep track of your spells. Uh, I'll, I'll roll a wisdom save for it and just we'll see. Yeah, it fails. <laughs> oh, well. No, that's, that's no, 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 the no, 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 no. The shark failed. You passed. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it rolled it rolled a ten, it has a plus zero. Uh, <laughs> what do I do now? Is this, it, it ask it what you want. No, no, you don't no, no, you, you don't have to worry about the wind's wisdom saving throw. That's the creature that Yeah. Now do you speak with the animal, there you go. Do I do anything for that? No. No. Okay. Now now you just role play talking with the animal that yeah. is XO. Yes. Hello, shark friend. Can you tell us what happened here? Did you see anything? Battle. Food. Uh. Food giver. <laughs> you kill many things. Kill Mary. The food what giver killed your hack? We friend? wish to know. No, us. Uh. It's not a very intelligent creature. Yeah. What should you ask? Last moon, big thing came. Strange fish. He kind of like gestures over, as, as much as a shark can kind of just point its nose to gesture more or less uh, towards <laughs> the other sharks. And though they're all watching you too now, because they can actually understand this as well. They're just not talking. Um, it's like we hid. Go far away. Still here. Still see. Dark scaled one. Talked to Merlion. Tie. Net? Boxes. Drag away. Big fish. Drag away. What did it look like? Uh. It look. It, 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 if a shark could look like it's struggling to conjure up a mental image, it certainly does. Um, <laughs> Fish or scaled one? The scaled one. Or two. So the fish and um, scaled one are separate, okay. We don't know this, only she does. What's the Michael's supposed to be muted. Does it have tentacles? <laughs> does it have long arms? Not speaker like you, but very different. Covered scales. Does it have a fin? Does it have fins? No, but swim. Swim well. Strange though. It, it. It. It did not use. It did not use its tail to swim. Like us. It, it wiggled. Like snake. Oh. No. Oh. Was it a snake? No. Not snake. Was it, a snake? it knows what a snake is. Oh, no. Back half wiggled. Oh, God. Was it a dragon? No. Oh. Oh. Is it a sea dragon? Those two, it says, and kind of moves slightly to look past you. Not same. Looking at looking at the two dragonborn. Like those, but those Bigger? are right size. 
no, right size. Had tail like shiny one, but thicker. Cover in spikes, jagged like teeth, as it just kind of opens its mouth to show you a little. Oh. Look like strange fish I'm almost. Confused. Are there water dragon horns? both had tails. You do both have tails, however, it specifically called out the longer, thinner one of mm. Are there water dragon horns? Not that you've heard of. Tell with would like snake. Swim fast. These scaly runs of wrong smell. They smell like shiny rock and bird. Dark ones smell, <laughs> Dark ones smell like foul water. And it went it went the way this way? It went the way that those drag marks are in the sand? Clung to strange fish like like sucker fish. Road. Strange Great. fish listened. It speak. It fish listen. Fucking like Aquaman over here. Uh. <laughs> Aquaman, Aquaman. Aquaman over here. Fish <laughs> Strange fish was. What is it's... this mm. thing that you are on? What what do you call this? You kind of like gestures to the ship itself. Or a boat. Fish. Strange fish like boat or ship. S same size. It broke the boat? No. Came, in, came last moon. Boat here. Wild. Big head. Many teeth. Long tail, but did not use tail. Reminds me of the time KJ played off swim. for. Four fins use fins to swim. Wait, you don't know what broke the boat? Or where the sea hag is? Sea hag's dead. Ate oh. Marion. Oh, you ate it, okay. Well, some. Was she tasting? Hey. Was she danger. Was she taste? Hey, hockey. Tastes like yeah. fish. Uh, did, did you already hear the song that's playing over here? You guys I have, have my own music. Do you guys have anything that you want to ask the shark? No, it's fine. Okay, thank you, shark. Thank you, smooth skin. And you, I pet him on the head. You come over here, hockey. Thank you, speaker. Which one are you? Yes. Gorgesh. Yeah, so to summarize, the shark appears to have seen a humanoid creature with a long it... tail that swam very well. Covered in very dark scales that was not a dragon ball. At least it doesn't think it was a dragon ball. It came in on some large, toothy aquatic Fucking megalodon, apparently. Spoke, spoke to the sea Now it was called Mary. she paid for something but she made a deal with something did did you guys kill the sea hag yes okay, yeah so we very much did kill the sea hag it, then she it, fucking paid for something yeah that wasn't a robbery I was over here with something. fucking crab rave playing <laughs> fucking I'd throw it off if you'd prefer crab yeah, people yeah. crab people crab chocolate people so three crates. Oh my God, English. Three crates of bullion went missing when they were traded off. It sounds like, from your description, all this. Uh, I guess. I mean, that's a guess for me. I, I'm. Yeah, if he went in there and then left with three things of gold, and she was still alive in there, I guess he traded or paid for something. I don't know though for sure. Yes, that does make the most amount of sense. How many crates of bullion are we meant to? Retrieve three, correct? Six. Six. We're missing three. Yeah, three appear to be inside the cave. How long do we have on the spell that's protecting us from the pressure? The pressure, all day. The water okay. breathing, eight hours. The cans, How... light sources, look to be about, by now, maybe a third burn through. 
Don't worry about it. I can you make best probably balls. have another hour or two down here without any concern, after which light will become the biggest issue. But you also saw a lot more cans on board the ship. Yeah. What? I say our current suggestion should be to inform the crew up top about what we have found. Yes. And uh, then proceed after. How, how are the crabs getting along with loading everything, uh, Mr. DM? They are very confused about the tasks they've been given, but they're trying their best. <laughs> Have they, been, they are trying they, their best. We'll, we'll say that they've successfully moved the, the smaller chest full of gold that you had initially indicated mm -hmm. over, and they're about halfway through moving the first of the three big chests, and there's like six crabs on this chest, and it's heavy. It's very oh. fucking heavy. It's full I'm of gonna... gold. I'm gonna I'm just assist. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say okay. me. I, I'm gonna go assist the crabs. Yeah, Gotta use them as a walking dolly to try and just walk it over. They look <laughs> like they're the size of my trunk. The crabs themselves the are the crabs themselves. The body is about two and a half feet across, and the legs no, no. are about a six foot span. If you Think of an oversized the king crab. They're not. They're not able to move a crate full of bullion particularly well. If you they're compare strong. them to the chair that's in there and the other furniture, they're fucking huge. That's not a lot everything of things at the right scale, okay? It's yeah. hard to do with map making. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. We'll help them load up all the stuff and then hang yeah. up and then explain and then find out our next course of action. Whether Put the big guys to work. To assist us with going <laughs> after the rest of the bullion, otherwise we get half the reward or not. We'll find out once we get up. Yeah, well, I agree with that action. We help the crabs load everything that's down here because there is an excessive amount of extra shit to make up for the lo the missing three. Once we have all that shit loaded, then we can. This go is true, up but uh, explain the situation. Primary primary concern are the three missing crates of bullion. Yes, but yeah, but we only have eight hours left on water, or about mm -hmm. eight hours left on water breathing. How long? So do you, you guys want to be walking? Yeah. Do you want to pursue on foot with limited water, or do we go up to the ship? I say we go back to the ship. Having, I will say, having the stood up on the course platform of with Lotus, with your dark vision and the ambient light near the trail, you see that the drag marks don't go that far. They go for probably 50, 60 feet, and then stop. As if whatever creature was dragging them needed a bit of a run up and then started swimming normally. Uh, so yeah, the, 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 them fuckers. They they're fucking gone. We're, yeah. we're on the bottom of the ocean right now. Yeah. That, baby, surfacing requires you to go up like hundreds of feet. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you want to go up right now, you're going to need some way to stay buoyant and hold onto the rope and just glide up or climb. So how are we not being crushed? Uh, magic. Crushed. magic. Quite literally. The magic, magic item that is from Ghost of Saltmarsh. <laughs> Good news! It's a suppository. Good oh. news, everyone! <laughs> uh oh. Suppository. <laughs> oh dear. It's from the Atlanta episode of Futurama. I remember. <laughs> so, baby, I know it. Okay. Well, it doesn't take you too long to get this. Well. Considering you only have half the cargo you intended, material loaded. Plus, yeah, plus all the extra stuff from in that cave. Yep. Like, you have a, to a total of four chests are brought to, are going to be brought to the surface. It might have been. Fun. Along with the, yeah, along sure. with all the wine casks. Okay, you're bringing all seven of the wine casks as well. I mean, if they have, if they you have wine in them, this. the net isn't yeah. quite that big. There's enough room for probably four of them. What if we with, hang on to it? Oh. I mean, the cargo net itself is just very full with the amount of stuff you're already putting in it. Girl. Yeah, so if, if well, we've got we've got a minotaur, two dragonborn, and an orc, mm -hmm. two yep. orcs. Well, one half orc. Yeah, and I was one. gonna one one half orc, one. I orc. think each of us could carry a barrel. Yeah, the question on. then becomes, uh, how do we get up? How do they know to pull it up? Uh. uh Somebody has to go up. Who's I thought our fastest there, swimmer? I thought there was a fucking rope up with Honey, the look. a secondary rope attached that you can pull tug on. 
Three hundred feet away through water, that rope is swinging wildly at the surface. Oh boy! Somebody's got to swim up and tell them to pull. Who's a quick swimmer aside oh. from me? I have the. I have. I'm pretty strong. I could probably climb the rope up. The secondary line. Exile an out, out of character thing. I'm the strongest here, or fastest swimmer, aren't I? You're the only one with an actual swim speed. God damn it. Okay, so the orc is gonna have to deal with it. Wait, can Everyone I use my wings underwater like a penguin? <laughs> you can certainly try. Because <laughs> oh, for a can little you bit of thrust, we'll Because I've got Because hold on, I've got I've got a Maybe. tail. And I've got wings that I can barely fly with. Like By the way, I will, I will say this. Based on the description you got from the shark, the description of movement, it sounds like the humanoid creature swam like a crocodile. I was just going to say that, I, yeah. yeah. Crocodiles use their tails. The assumption of what it, yes, who it but, is. Yes, but they wiggle. The shark is saying it didn't have a fluke or a fin like it. It wiggled side to side, undulating like a sea snake. But it had scales. Yeah, like a crocodile. Yeah, there's multiple species that have spale, scales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alligators and crocodiles are very scaly. And Especially... And, and it looked like us. It had moved like a serpentine creature in the water. I kind of have a guess on what that is. But... There's a couple options. Quite a few, actually. I hate, I hate my life for that, too. Because it's like, oh, no. Hmm. I, I was sitting over here thinking, How far like, are we green. down? Or not Lamprey, but Lemra. Probably. I got knock. Uh? What would you like to unlock? 300 ah. feet, you said? That's how deep we are? Oh, we don't need no squishy spell for that. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. The fucking... No, you don't. Look up how deep the deepest divers have dove. Those yeah, guys are trained for it. We're not. Those are, the, yeah. those are, the, first of all, those are mixed air, mixed gas. Second of all, it takes a long time to acclimatize to that. Yep. And you have to descend five feet at a time. It, yeah. They um, dropped us. Yeah. But it's like over six hundred feet. I think it's way longer. Yeah. No. Like deep, like deep sea dive, like welders and such. They they all stay in a hyperbaric chamber, so they're basically living under pressure for a month straight. No, oh, these uh, guys just dive down. This is like regular diving. Yeah, they use oh, mixed air. After. Yeah, they can try their. Yeah, yeah. underwater diving. underwater divers go up to five hundred and eighty on some of their the, wells. They actually have these guys that actually just dive, not welders or anything, they're just divers. They go, went down over 600 feet. Yeah, but we're not them. Yeah, you breathe in the <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we can't do that. It's not... Fuck you, I'm special. <laughs> you are breathing water, I'll say that right now. That's an advantage that they didn't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you can, we can't. <laughs> Granted, the only problem is sound travels much further down, down water than, uh, <laughs> than in oh, air. Oh, God. Wait, and if you, you let off knock. a knock, you're gonna Don't kill us. Yeah, I'm over here with nitrogen narcosis. Well, whatever it is you're trying to... Oh yeah, that's your idea. No. Just trying to hit the denied. bottom of the fucking boat. No, Tristan. I, I think... This is as bad as the fucking fireball <laughs> idea. Hang on, at least let me let me at least read the spell and see if you can just cast it. I think you might need to actually cast Hold it on lock. Hold on, Exile. Know. That level of pressure hitting the keel of a ship from this era is gonna crack that bitch No, it's not, it makes a loud noise. It doesn't make a fucking explosion. It's no, no, fine. no. What's going on? Uh, he's trying to knock on the bottom of the boat with a spell. Ooh. Tristan. Tristan. Why? To get them to... Let them know. To get them to pull the net up. Oh. It has to be an actual lock. Do we have a why fucking don't you lock? Pull on the, why, aren't, yeah. why aren't you just you pulling on the, the lock up? <laughs> pull you know, on you the probably could have made the net. by now if you've just they, gone up the rope. Maybe yeah, we're 300 feet swim, down. Swim, we're done. <laughs> doing this. What? The net isn't, or the rope isn't taut. It's fucking loose. So we take, it, it, and rig, so we take it and rig it to the railing. You guys dumb. I'm not talking anymore. The, the implication no, no, we... what, what you were told by them up there is someone comes up and tells you to and tells them to start the hoisting. So to climb that rope, we can rig it to one of these cannons on the ground, pull it tight, and then just climb up that way. That way, it's not fucking wildly swinging all over the damn place. Well, no, no, no. no. Well, it's, 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 it's attached it's, I would to the net. The rope with the, yeah, the cargo net, which is currently carrying several thousand the pounds. The secondary of line. Yeah, which is still also tied off to the cargo net. 
currently. It could be you could change yes. it. I will just, I will climb I will fucking swim it. I'll swim it. I'm the fastest swimmer. Okay. You're swimming up the rope? Yes. Okay. Aren't dragons supposed to be like really super tough with their scales like dragon kid? We're not dragons. You're dragon kid so or dragonborn. It takes you There's enough, a major difference. Can't so you, like, are you, you know, are you dashing? Are you swimming at full speed? We weigh uh, 300 plus pounds. We're barely are you fireproof under. or some shit. Yeah, since, okay. since pressure's not a concern, I'll swim. It takes you 30 feet. seconds to reach the surface. He's fire resistant <laughs> and lightning resistant. <laughs> you move 60. You when you move at full speed underwater because you have a swim speed, you move 60 feet and around because you're dashing. It now takes you have you nitrogen in our and the surface. bins. I I don't have to worry about pressure. So, no, I don't. Yeah, going up to the water, and this was the same going in and out, is a very unpleasant exchange of coughing out, and the water kind of forces itself out of your lungs to allow the air in. It feels like your lungs are vomiting. I mean, I'm just going to point this out. You still can't get the bends, even if you hold your breath. We, no, we aren't oh, holding we're, our breath. We're breathing water. Yeah, magic I know. Yeah. Magic we're, let's yeah, let's we stop were arguing magic about actual die physics, <laughs> because this is D&D. &D. You're underwater. You're a, you, we've got two dragon people, an elf with antlers, a minotaur, a cat girl, and an orc. It's like two two orcs. A full orc and a half orc. <laughs> you see the other orc. 1.5 orc. Yeah. Me, me and just just off the statistics alone, me and Belgoris' fucking sh backs would have cracked under the weight of our own bodies, just being under this much pressure underwater. It wouldn't be <laughs> fine. Suffice to say, you get to the surface and quickly inform the crew, and you all begin the hoist. As the crabs kind of just look at you as you fly away. And I give them a well, before the before I before I left, I told them to go ahead and eat, or go eat. Because I know beyond... there was corpses. Yeah, they, 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 they kind of just scuttle about and begin doing crab things. Crab mm -hmm. very pop happens off in the distance. And, and everyone else, just to confirm, is riding the cargo. Yeah, okay. yeah and we're carrying the extra cask up with us. It takes Whee! several minutes to, yeah. to get to the surface in your method. Probably seven or eight minutes, because the very heavy load that that ship is currently carrying. That's gotta it's be the like size of the vessel, the size of the train. So, yes, it's very heavy. As you breach the surface, you, you do see Splitter Diggs kind of standing, like, looking over the railing as best he can as a half You didn't have to load everything all at once, you fuckers. We well, didn't, have asshole. Here. There's only half there. What do you well, got a gym for? We're not going to use it, my friend. Hey. One, two. I only see three. Well, that was different. Where's the other half? Well, we've got a bit of a story to tell about that. Uh, we've got a bit of a problem, it's more like it. We load all of it up at once, right. and when he finds out it's only half, he's complaining. Get back, get back on board. Yeah, you're already on board, Garrish. You, you were let up. You're dry by now. Yeah. I would assume Garrish has already told the oh, story. I can smell that smoke in here. No, oh, I haven't. Gallon. So, I climb yeah, up over the railing, I give myself a good shake, and I look Splitter Diggs in the eye. We definitely have a problem. Define problem. Well, as I walk over to retrieve my gear and return head the gear that I'd used from him. Yep. Um, it appears that uh, there was a sea hag down there by the name of Miriam. And, uh, well, we killed her and her spawn. Investigated her shit. Found three bullion. Our friend Lotus there, she spoke to the sharks. And um, they said they witnessed Miriam make an exchange of three crates of bullion with a scaly humanoid using a fish to transport them with a net. A fish the size of a boat. Yes, the size of a boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm... I need a second to process this. He walks away <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> Take your time. I light my pipe. Yeah, he, does, he, he does the same. <laughs> Trust us, it was not I did, I it was not that a... great of news when we heard it the first time. And as Garrish says right, that, right. I take a position okay. leaning against the wall and just wait for him to say yeah, the rest something. Of the crew begins bringing the cargo on board. So I see four I see four chests here. Yes. The fourth one was of gold that was down <laughs> down in the cave. There was a few other trinkets and other things 
that are still really? down there, but we we didn't load. We couldn't load everything. You could probably uh, spend a day salvaging this wreck and make a good haul off of just the old shit down there. Looks like the sea hag was a hoarder. Barrels of wine down there too. Oh, we brought the, we brought the wine up. <laughs> oh, we, we all six? Seven. Seven. Okay. Seven. <laughs> first, things yeah. first, first things first. Just give me a moment. I gotta. Th I'm trying to think of. First of all, thank you. I'm sorry I brought you in this much danger, and you will be justly compensated for the events that have transpired. I did not expect to see Hag. Much no less. No one ever does. <laughs> fish. Uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. I heard of a chip. Apparent. That's what she said. That's the small boat, two ship size. Because well, uh, I guess the shark had uh, asked what the boat was, and we he said it was similar to the size of the ship down there. He just kind of looks at Lotus like. You talk to the shark. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Do you okay. not want to talk uh, to sharks? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a simple spell that. Not for me, apparently. <laughs> not everyone has that type of spell. Not even I carry that spell. I'll prepare it on myself. I. It's more oh, of a I, thing I of court magicians. It's, it's... I, I was going. I was going to. I, I look at them a little confused. And then, then I think to myself, "Wait, they don't deal with animals on a regular basis." No, they make sense now. <laughs> and I just, That's I just mean. slowly and now he nod my, all of I, I slowly nod <laughs> to myself, like, "Oh, this is why people don't fucking have this." <laughs> Am druid. You're a druid, and I'm a ranger. <laughs> we deal with fucking animals on a regular. All right. Me especially. Boys. Take that fourth chest, start dividing it out. Hopefully we'll get enough to cover our expenses from that and get some chairs for these divers. As for the other half of the bullion, as it is not recover as it is uh, not recoverable, I'm trying to remember where the fuck this voice is supposed to be. As we know this Since And can someone make that damn dog shut up or just put it below decks? I'm tired of hearing him. Why said bring the dog? I don't know why she told me to Anyway. Yeah, there's a small, <laughs> small dog in the corner just barking at all of you for some reason. Is it anyway. a it, is it corgi by chance? It is a scraggly uh, looking mutt. Oh. <laughs> puppy! It, it kind of looks go like the puppy. it looks like a much smaller Irish wolfhound, kind of scraggly gray, young puppy looking. Oh. Looks puppy, like puppy, puppy. massive feet, <laughs> like it's gonna be a huge dog someday. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Are you jealous? Can I say currently, a puppy? currently puppy, about puppy. the size of a corgi. Yeah, he's so good. Oh, good. He's mad because I'm saying puppy, and he's fucking okay. jealous. Anyway, we'll notice the sad. Yours. Since the gold is unrecoverable, we can wipe our hands clean of that. And we'll return what we have. The city is not going to be happy, but. Just be aware, they're going to search the hell out of this boat once we get to shore. Understood. Mm -hmm. It's not right, like... Just the fucking... If you have anything it's that up. needs hidden, hiding, tell me, and I'll hide it. Uh, I just well, grabbed the net. I, there's a, so I showed him a small a small ocker. I mean, I just grabbed this to stick into my glaive at one point. I don't think it'll be a problem. Keep it as your share. I don't care. Looks like well, over like 200 gold. Must you know what? So My treat. It's a good share. Do you usually go in that you have to worry about hiding goods? Sometimes the people you work for in this business want what was on the ship because they failed to take it the first time. Most of the time, I do more legitimate business. Ships go down these wars all the time. Usually it's not deep sea stuff like this. Usually we're just bringing boats back up from the bottom. That's why we got the big cranes. That's why we've got the pump. It's not that hard work, at least in terms of the technical side, but... As long as you're not dealing with a fucking sea hag. Well, I've never had to deal with one of those. I have had to deal with angry marin, tritons, giant shark once, um, large octopus that was surprisingly reasonable. Reasonable? <laughs> Is he telling the truth? <laughs> Sounds like it. Like, with, with a 13? 18. Why would he lie? 18. Uh, 
it, 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 this is a moment where your brain clicks like, yeah, I think the truth might be stranger than fiction here. <laughs> <laughs> One of those, yep, I look, wish I he was done... lying, but he's look, right. I, look, I Why does done... it say that I'm still a rat? Because that's just something that won't fix itself until he yeah, edits it with every game. Yeah, it, it, it's it doesn't fine. say you're a rat for me. It does for me. It does show it on my screen, too. But eh, Yeah, what, what, yeah, what, yeah, in the player know, list. You know, we know you're not. It's fine. Because you have the rat selected. Rat. You don't have your own character selected. There we go. Uh, hey, that's now not it's true. Yeah. Now it's I, I had to re-enable it. That's weird. I don't know. Anyway. Why don't you folks get below Dex? We've got coffee. Dry off. Coffee sounds good right about now. We'll finish up we'll finish up on here. Up on deck and we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we have available. And kind of shares we'll get out of this with only half the payout. I mean, and, uh, at at the very least we can get very drunk if we wanted that is a wonderful benefit you've added and i take it the crew is quite happy with us oh they're fucking that. thrilled they've already opened the first cask <laughs> <laughs> yeah we brought uh, up everybody's gonna get wine wagon. drunk there's like <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah as you as he says that you just look over there's a guy currently at the spigot like uh <laughs> holding holding it there <laughs> Yeah, no. Finish up loading first, then you can party. <laughs> Sailor, if you're Night going to drink, grab some glasses for us at least. Yeah, we brought up seven of those fucking okay. things. I'm going to take a biofuel for you to keep talking. <laughs> Get a fish as big as a boat? But yeah, oh, Wyatt, to answer your question, yeah. Yeah, we're dragon adjacent at best. We are so separated away from Dracon true draconic bloodline that all we have is like minor bonuses from being descendant of dragons. Shark, kind of got dragon would, faces. Sharks would yeah. definitely know what a whale is, so they it's not a whale. Oh god. It said giant fish. They probably meant the giant fish. But it had teeth. It had teeth like the shark. Yeah. Mm. So that's why I was like, this is a megalodon or something. <laughs> No, I mean, it, it would be. Oh, I, think, I think he was talking about the scaly one had the teeth. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the fish, but maybe. Well, we'll, have, we'll let, let's, maybe they both did. Let's maybe. hope that it was the. Let's, the, let's the, hope it was the scaly fish one. Fish had the teeth. Oh, the fuck. Fish had the teeth. The strange fish. It seemed confused describing it. Oh, fuck. Well, if it wasn't. A shark like it would have said that it was like them but bigger with teeth like them and, and if it was and, and, and they know what whales and dolphins are why we also said it didn't use its tail to swim but it had flippers oh god oh fuck so it's uh um it might be something old called? it's old uh, what's that fucking dinosaur something we called? don't want to fucking fight a me a mesiosaur. Mesosaurus, yeah, it's a mesosaur. Uh, <laughs> Mosasaur, that's what it's called. Yeah, Mosasaur. Yeah, Mosasaurus, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's headed with a big one that size of the boat. Of whales. Oh, fuck. I don't want to fight one of those. I don't want to be in the water with one of those. So what did you say, War? Then. Fun fact: the, There are uh, lots of whales. Of yeah. from small to I will big. say you you want to separate this conversation out because you guys have never heard of a mosasaur. Yeah. Except, yes. Okay. Yes. Quirky scratch. You can roll a history check. If you get a sum over twenty, you have heard of a mosasaur. <laughs> yeah, attributes history. Normal. I mean, we'd probably look at it and think it was a fucking water you dragon. Have <laughs> okay. Yeah. You Doesn't know matter. What a mosasaur is. So you can say what you will to the rest of the party. You've seen the skeleton of one. Seen the skeleton of one and also maybe found some old texts in a fucking tomb somewhere. That's a yeah. huge bitch. Huge bitch. Hmm. That almost sounds I'm, like something... I'm having issues. That almost sounds like something I found some old texts of in a old tomb back in... Back in my homeland. I honestly can't remember what the 
Those are, are called, but... Desert? <laughs> well, people love to tell stories and write them down for later generations. Mm. But, uh... I think they called it a... Mosasaur? I could be wrong. I would have to find some newer text. I can't exactly go back there and look at it, so... What in the name of the Nine Hells is a Mosasaur? I'm going to guess something that the shark doesn't want to deal with, so we don't either. A reptilian-like creature. Aquatic, aquatic base. Breathes. Is the air that's naturally in water. No, and it is a blow. No, it, it, was, it had to come up and oh, serve okay. prayer. Yeah. Your description can be wrong, though. Feel free. I, I won't correct it. It is true. Yeah. I mean, people... This is a, this is a third-hand recounting of a Moses <laughs> yeah. story. Yeah, and they might <laughs> yeah, not even know what a blow hole is back then. Please continue. <laughs> I love that. I'm talking out of this. Is that... <laughs> Dude, that's what I was trying to ask earlier. I'm like, why is there just a fucking hammer in the middle of the map? Because it's our icon as a party. Yeah, yeah. The Milwaukee hammer is our party symbol. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, according to some texts, it was a vicious predator. I can't exactly... What? can't exactly uh, show you any, because I don't have any of the extra text, nor do I, did I have it in... The current journal, I so did. Um, what the that's because you're running that opera bullshit, probably. It is not whatever. Well, well, yeah. well, it is thankful that we have not encountered the creature then. Is it, show, is it showing up on this though? It Gr does. Granted, oh, I do kind of remember them having a massive mural yeah, that's, of that's one. Next, dude. Just, just, are you, but can you, can not, you see what's cannot remember how big no. it was, but it was pretty good sized mural of what ancient people thought it was. I don't, I don't know what it looks like either, so I'm just telling you third hand accounts. Understood. I'm not touching anything. Well, <laughs> nothing we can do about it now. And I guess we can head back up and spend some time with the crew. So, you remember earlier on in the game when I told you that the order in which you do things will have an impact on stuff? Uh -huh. You might be able to infer what one of those changes was. Yep. Yep. Whether we had to deal with the thing or not. Whether all the gold was there. Whether you beat the other individual there. Or maybe a ritual would have been completed if we had done that second. Mm hmm By the way, but Exile... Yes. Exile, why do we have Witcher options where none are good? <laughs> <laughs> not, not even just, not even that. Uh, for anyone that wants to see my current awkward predicament, uh, yeah, I, I looked at it briefly. It's, it's uh, weird. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Just restart it. I have twice. Well, then restart it with fucking Chrome and not Opera. <laughs> Or did you delete your Chrome? No, I haven't deleted Chrome. I see delete absolutely nothing offer. wrong with what you're doing. Yeah, I'm not touching the. I'm not touching it, but like it's literally just spazzing out, yeah, just disappearing, is just flashing. It's only part of it though. That's interesting. Uh, it's doing it randomly. Maybe the graphical extension. There's a ghost sitting on your desk. Opera. <laughs> also, it's helping. <laughs> also, yeah, well, it happens when he's talking. Is it? Mm-hmm. Oh. No, it doesn't. No, no. No, it's oh. not consistently. No. Anyway. Right. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Is it happening when anyone talks? And also, by the way, it's not Witcher options. You don't know all of the effects, nor do you know which was better. I know about Boris's choice. <laughs> <laughs> We're... Rx Kepitz. Damn, that's a name. What did you say? Oh, the nickname you had my men give me. 
Where well, it's RS Capsule. Okay? Yeah. Try my best here. Oh, yeah, and why everybody knows that my horse is a vampire. Everybody knows, nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, that's the weird you... part. I was like, y'all are the most like, septic group of people I've ever met. A, a short time later. US so... is more fascinated than uh, terrified. You haven't exactly tried to eat any of them yet. By the way, how's your blood doing? Very good, thanks to that hag. Oh yeah, I forgot you filled up her. Yep. Well, almost. I'm. I'm. I. I'm gonna restart my computer. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Get continue though. Yeah. As you're all kind of gathered in the area, you know, in the hold of the ship at this table, you know, having a small meal, you feel. You feel the anchor being hauled up slowly, and the ship, over the next 10 to 15 minutes, that is completed. Into motion. And, yeah, the, the, you hear that sail is being set, and the ship is beginning its journey back to port. So, I'm going to go on deck and uh, get some wine. Anyone want some? As QS grabs... I a glass. QS grabs a bunch of uh, mess, mess kit... To Six or seven cups. Yep. Yeah. Going up there, as you find that the barrels of wine have been moved to one side, and there is currently the first mate standing watch over them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boss, is there, is there a fee for a glass? You? I don't really care about you guys. You all you know, did some good work there. You get drunk and you're also not working the crew. You get drunk and cause a problem, we'll have an issue. But, go ahead. I'm... Sounds like the most reasonable man I know. Yeah, he doesn't want, he can't have the ship's crew blackout drunk, he let them have some, it appears. You see a bunch of bugs sitting in one corner that have been clearly recently used. <laughs> yeah. He let, he let them have a mug and then sent them back to work, basically. Boo. Here's your morning ration of wine, and now get back to work. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> U.S. Uh, rules? That sucks. They have to sail back to port. Once they're there, you have no idea what their policy will be. <laughs> uh, Q.S. So, did the crew uh, put a uh, thieves or a spigot on it, or is it just an open keg but that you have to? So it, it, is a, it is a it is a proper cask, but there someone has put a spigot in it. Okay. At least in one of them. The others are sitting. This one is sitting on the its other ones are on top. I can take up. something real quick. The others are appear sealed. Well, the spigot can easily be popped out and drilled into it, and for exactly. later consumption. Yeah, I wouldn't do that right now. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, your own fucking cask. Floods <laughs> the deck with wine. <laughs> Yeah, it's as as you take a drag of it, it is a very it's a fortified wine. It's higher alcohol than the majority of wine of this age. It appears. Okay, so it has not been uh, washed down with water with water for No, it was sealed sealed. Yeah. Okay. The barrel itself doesn't even look like it spent much time underwater short of your trip to the surface. Hmm. You're not quite sure how it got down there in the first place. Of course. There's a lot of things in that hag's lair that didn't quite make sense. Yeah. Give us stars filling up goblets. Or cups of... And... And uh, the whole one's over to... Uh, Mr. Uh, Roxby. And then grabs, say, a few of... Few of and helps uh, Roxby carry them back to the rest of the group. By now, when they make their way back down, I grab the glass and I go up and find Spitter Diggs. Splitter Diggs. Yep. He's he's currently he, you you find him arranged uh, arranged at a table in the captain's cab, which is left open. He's there with several people and is actively counting out all of the gold and other things that have been found. Out of morbid curiosity, Mister Diggs, Captain. Of course. How much is one of those crates worth? Uh, 
Oh, probably half a million. So one point five. Okay, that's a lot of fucking money that they see had traded over. I wonder what that was for. That's concerning. Beats me. I mean, anything that can needs that much gold. Talking. But Here, she had so many coins down there. That was, Why not trade the coins and just straight bullion when it can all be reforged? It must well, maybe be as maybe it's pure. Certainly worth a lot more. Coins here are coming up to looking at close to ten thousand for the full haul. Right now, it's still a bit more to count. Gems are getting a little complicated. As you see, there's a there's a dwarven man in the corner, just like they're not complicated. They're just time consuming. <laughs> he's he's looking with a jeweler's piece at these stones. Oh uh, so, yes, the appraisers. Always so he literally fun. has uh, that sight glass that he's crunched in his eye as he's looking yeah, he's, at him. Yeah, he's, he's got it right in his face. <laughs> <laughs> but mm, Any of them damaged by the seawater? No, they're fine. This was six months' taxes, though. For the entire six city. Six months? The entire city of Holy. Port Plaza. I got 15,000 people up there. This is six months' taxes. And half of it's gone. Gonna fucking nuke the treasury. Well, that's not a word that exists. It's gonna destroy the treasuries. It's gonna be a problem. Yeah, not one the city can't problem. weather. Law's wealthy enough to cover it, but... I'm not an expert in finance, but I know this isn't a good thing at all. A lot of people are gonna struggle to get paid for a while. So that's why they're going to search the ship. They want to make sure we're not stealing half of their taxes. Yeah. Right, fair enough. Well, I'll let you gentlemen continue. Yep. And I right make now, my way out of the cabin. I will, I will say, though, before you leave, Mr. T Mr. Nimonis, yes, it looks Captain. like we'll be able to pay you your full fee. Based on the oh, that's refreshing to hear. Yeah. We'll also make out fine from the trip, but... Hopefully it doesn't hurt your reputation. Oh. If it's not present, then it can't be salvaged. And that's while true. your story is certainly far-fetched sounding... I also believe it far more than I'd say you left three crates down. Yeah. We'd be foolish to. How would we get them back up without your help? Exactly. Especially because you don't know where we are. And as you as you kind of glance out, you realize this whole time, there was never any indication of where you were. You, you were too far offshore to see anything. You just stopped at a random point in the ocean, anchored, and were right above the wreck. With no explanation. Well, if you can keep this location secret, might be a good idea to recheck it out. There's... Still quite a bit of crap down on that old boat that you could recover. Mm. Potentially. Water's a bit deep for a proper salvage up, though. And from your description, it doesn't sound like its vessel was uh, in very good shape. No, it looked like it had been rolled over. Mm. Everything was pounded to one side, and half the decking was blown out, and everything spilled out like it had impacted the ocean floor that way, almost. Well, the, sh the ship wasn't sailing alone. It had an escorting frigate. From the description that they gave, Freak Storm whipped up, and when they got to the other side of it, the other ship was gone. They went through the ringer to get out. We have heard coming... sea hags who control the weather. Huh. We had a similar issue, but there weren't massive waves. It was a storm. It was another creature we dealt with coming into the city. I can't remember what that was called. Hmm. But... It seems like these oceans are filled with strange creatures. The amount of stories I heard from sailors, I thought they were all tall tales, but witnessing it myself, trying to Things figure out what was myth and what is true, it's wild. Well, now you live in it. <laughs> that we are, good sir. I will see you later. Have a good night. I will say this, though, before you head out. I've been sailing these waters for 155 years. I have never seen a creature des described in the manner of whatever hold off those chests. Well, one of our party members, Kirky Squat, Horky Scratch, there, she said um, she found some tombs describing something similar called a Moses something. Moses. Mm. Mosasaurus, something like that. Is that like a plesiosaurus? So those I have seen. Are they big finned? Well, they, the way he described it, they're wide fins, lots of teeth, almost like a whale. Uh, those, I mean, they're not that big. They are 
dangerous, certainly, if you happen to be swimming with one, but usually you don't find them on the west of the islands. They hang out near Fell Isle, and, well, some on Zilar, but... Nah, well, have you ever heard of these animals being controlled? Because that's what's concerning me. Because if he can control something that big, what kind of army can he cross his arms, leans back, takes a long drag in his pipe. Well, the way I see it, any animal smart enough to be trained can be trained. That's a fair point. We did just talk to sharks. I did not expect that. I've heard of and seen a few court druids talking to animals, but <laughs> wasn't expecting sharks. I didn't think they'd be smart enough to give you enough useful information. Fair. <laughs> I figured they just wanted food, but it seems they're fairly intelligent. They just it's surprising. Some of the, some of the sharks smooth are puppies. Smart. And uh, you said there smooth were hunters. <laughs> the hunter sharks—they don't usually hunt uh, people. They know we're more trouble than we're worth. If they're dead. They'll scavenge. They'll scavenge the dead all day, though. Makes sense. Reminds well, me of the vultures you've seen out the battlefield. They were probably sated on the other bodies. Didn't see you as worth the risk. Yeah. Well, hopefully we don't have to deal with whatever that was. Tell me about it. I have a ship to worry about. Just my life. <laughs> it's 155 years. Have you been doing salvaging that whole time? Mm, not the whole time. A lot of it was, well, merchant sailing. Got into salvage. Ooh. Probably 70 odd years ago now. Yeah, huh. it's been a long life. <laughs> well, I hope the seas stay calm for you, my friend. Safe travels. Thank you. Mosey on out, wine cup in hand. <laughs> Tristan turns his webcam on with a rifle immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I can't have Discord open when I'm streaming. <laughs> Tristan would age restrict the hell out of us. I'm already age restricted. What? I know, and he's got a what magazine the sitting up on the counter what? loaded with nine. Tristan, that magazine's unloaded, right? Right? I see an orange follower, actually. It might be unloaded. It's unloaded. Yeah. No. Does that look unloaded? No, I was talking about the one right behind your microphone from our perspective, uh, stand from our perspective. Oh, yeah. this one? Yeah. He has no loaded firearms beside him. Don't encourage him. <laughs> I was going to say, stop saying things. Last thing we need me. to do is for him to accidentally I, put a hole in his room. There's I already enough of those. I can't see what's going on for a fucking reason. Those guns it, aren't loaded to, in my perspective, all right? They're not let loaded. Us, let us resume. <laughs> Let's continue our march through the story. Twitch is a fucking cut. Anyways. Is there any other conversation or things that must be done while you're aboard this vessel besides maybe grabbing some more wine throughout the evening. I guess we fill a wine skin to take with us, but that's about it. Of course. Of course. Balgor's just gonna pull out his uh, violin. Okay. I literally poked my head around the corner and they had a fire. What are you playing? Violin playing in my music hey, right now. Play it's Devil Went Down to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe what you play? Um, just think of the emotion behind this. A good way to describe this. Like, now, while our good friend Ralgoris is preparing his instruments, do we wish to stay in the current city, or should we book passage out somewhere else? Do you think? Well, we still have to wait until our main employer ship gets back and so we want to be close by when that happens hardcore rendition of gangster's paradise <laughs> <laughs> i love it love this guy <laughs> our main employer who the fuck's that zillow Sona, the archmage you were working for didn't he backstab us no, no. So oh, right, 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 we met another so, guy, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, yes, 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 threw you to the wolves, yeah. Okay, but, yes, it's all coming back to me now, okay, yeah, yes. he's on a kill list. All right, we're good, we're good. I'm caught up with memory. Uh, Bogoros, as you start to play, QS grabs her loot from her 
Thash and uh, joins it. Just plucking along. We'll jam session on boat. So, bats forward to port. Anyone got anything else they want to do? We'll pipe read. I mean, how much? Uh, how much are we looking at now in our treasury? Well, about an hour before you make port, you've been following the coastline now for a little ways, and you can see the city on the horizon. Splare Diggs comes up to you and says, "All right, well." The good news is, we have been able to work this out so that you'll all be paid. Bad news is, it is going to be slightly less than we initially thought, because we're going to be getting only half of the salvage title. The good news is, what you brought in, in from that uh, extra miscellaneous crate is ours for the keeping. And I assume you can, never... we, you can sell the wine off for a nice little profit, too. Unless you're going to Indeed. keep that. Uh, we're going to keep the first three casks because the boys got a little enthusiastic and opened three of them. <laughs> oh, they didn't, finish, they didn't finish any one of them. They just opened three. Uh, you sailors remind me of the marines that we fight with every once in a while. Drink, seems like, work hard. I love it. Seems like a little waste, but then again, can easily plug back up for later use. That's a fucking cask, bro. I can fucking ram a piece of wood in there and she's good. You do as you as you're all there. As, as you are all there, he produces six pouches of gold. Gold. Two hundred gold pieces to everyone except for Torin, who has took taken a two hundred GP aquamarine as his share. Appreciate you the promise paycheck. Three, you were promised three hundred. So you got two thirds of what you were all promised. So how much do we get? Two fifty. Everyone got two hundred. Two hundred. And I can hear Hockey questioning his own decisions now. No, I'm not. I'm no, just wondering where I can get a piece of twine to tie this to my fucking hilt. I don't think you'd need twine. I get that done. For, in the city for what now? They could probably just bring it to the forge. They could probably pouch it. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Because I want to form a relationship with the blacksmith. Uh, by the way, I believe this is your boss, and I hand over the trident. I don't need this anymore. Yep. Uh, just yep. go in and delete the items from your inventory, all of the tridents and spears and other things you picked up that you don't need. Yep, no need a trident. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll buy a trident. It was interesting too. And as we approach, I don my heavy armor again, my chainmail, all that good shit. Yep. Get ready for inspection. As the boat as the boat comes ashore, uh, ashore, comes up to appear, you do in fact see a significant number of tide guards standing there with several rather formal-looking officials. They don't actually pay much attention to you. They there's a short description, a series of back and forth arguments, and a lot of confusion all around. You're asked to provide your story three or four times over. Eventually, however, they determined that. At least none of you have anything that they could charge you with. So you are all let go without too deep a search. So they did not find the pouch of drugs you're carrying, which are indeed very illegal here. What? Hold up. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. That was Garish who had that. My mistake. My mistake. Garish just has fucking magic mushrooms on him. What a well, guy. What is Kraken? Oh. You just stuck it in your component pouch. They didn't notice it being any different say, from anything else in there. I was going to say, I I forgot about that one. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Suffice to say, though, you were all let off the pier, and you were surprised to find a certain familiar blue kobold kind of waiting at the end of the wharf or for you. Well, you guys have had a busy weekend, it seems. Or a week. Really? Seems to be. Boss has heard some of your earlier exploits, and now I'm hearing that uh, half the gold wasn't there when you went to recover it, huh? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Well, maybe it's <clears throat> good, but I didn't hear everything, so we'll look for a full explanation. As it stands, though, Boss would like to talk with you, and uh, our ships come home a little early. So I think it's a good idea that we'll meet everyone. But first, let's get back to Zill. He's got a lot to say. Hey. I'm just gonna give myself the long rest because it's obviously been like 12 fucking hours. Yeah, you all get a long rest. 
and down one blood point, and long rest. Uh, it didn't do the long rest. What the hell? Did you not see it? Oh, there it goes. It didn't pop up. There we go. Sorry. You don't mean to laugh in your ear. Spiritual weapon takes so <laughs> long, long rest. rest. You might want to select hammer. your character so, again there, bro. I will. Uh, what are I you, reincarnated try. as a Milwaukee hammer? It's a new terrible. isekai? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Fucking amazing. There we go. Hey man. There we go. Okay, uh, the funny so the fun okay, like this is what I've been thinking about the spiritual weapon is my head cannon. Sorry to interrupt exile, but like <laughs> in my head, every time it hits something, because like I had one of these hammers, it's an anti-ring claw that's fucking bullshit. They ring like a goddamn tuba. Ding ding. Every time he says he attacks somebody, I can literally hear it in the back of my head just bing, <laughs> bouncing off somebody's fucking head or skull. <laughs> Yeah, it does have quite a resonance to it as it hits, it's, especially it's, when it hits metal. It's like an instrument, bro. Like, it's not anti-ring at all. Get one and hit the fucking concrete at Home Depot. You'll see what I mean. Or just tap the shell. I'm not, it's bad. All right, do we need to take a bio now, or are we going to keep going? I'll take I'm a bio. Good. I need it. Now's a good time. I got to let the dogs out, so let's take five minutes. We'll be back short. I was just going to say, you might want to take a second to stretch your back out. <laughs> Everybody walk around. You know, I haven't Looks had low. a need to use breath weapon yet. I, I like. Well, it's part of my area denial build, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm kind of. Yeah, unfortunately, mine is a line. Mm -hmm. But it, that can be extremely useful, regardless. Yeah. In court, because it's amazing. It, yep. Because me and you could double up on a corridor and all of a sudden... Oh, yeah, because <laughs> you can attack from behind me because you have a reach weapon. And also, if we're able to stand side by side that corridor... Yep. You've got that whole left side in a line and the rest of it's just fire. <laughs> It'll work. <laughs> so, the, so whatever side you're on is getting hit with fire and light. I mean, we could do the old, uh, it's a, a strat that we used from uh, when I was doing... Um, the old uh, shake and bake. <laughs> well, no, because uh, we have two heavy frontliners. We can do the cock and balls. We have what? that, haven't we? Yeah, we got a barbarian. That's a, a health tank. Yeah. What's your health points at there, fucking... Uh, 42. Yeah, what's yeah, everybody's max health pretty... out of morbid curiosity? I'm just wondering where we all sit. Well, obviously, uh... God, what is this character's name? Nico's character has the most health. Guarantee you. Gets a D12 every level up. Yeah, I've got 52. Yeah, because you get a D10. Yeah. So Nico, me, you. Yep. My two hybrid class. My hybrid build gives me D8s every level. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, unfortunately, paladins don't get a D10. No, they don't. they don't. But if they did, they'd be a little overpowered and really hard to deal yeah, with. Yeah, that's true. It is a nice balance for them. Who have it? If paladins had a D10 for health, they'd they'd be fucking monstrous uh -huh. to deal with. They are going to be super tanky. They have a slight magic ability. Yeah, they'd be... A and they're bad. also martial with pretty with a lot of shit. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it'd be a little too much. A little too much. They already can get... If I get plate armor, it, it, it's... Like, it's, it. <laughs> it's like... That's like a fighter on... That's a fighter on steroids, is what yep. it is. That's but what it, With the D8, it brings you down to... Hey, you're the damage guy. I'm the tank guy. Mm -hmm. But with only a ten health points difference, that's one hit between us. Uh, what are you doing, Nunu? No, no. That's cool. Yeah, that's why I'm just waiting for Hello. a better shield. And I'm the only one home right now, so I had to check on the dogs. You okay. can wait. Excellent. Yeah, How much are tower shields? Tower shields? Uh, oh, I don't know. 
I mean, they, technically no, all actually, shields are just away. yeah. They took the all shields are shields. So I mean, if you want to be a tower shield, that's just flavoring. Well, no tower. Can you stud are... chainmail in D and D. Not a chainmail. No, the next step that's, up from chainmail would be gun mail or, or scale mail. Yeah. yeah, I am giving you guys a lot of money early on because you should know you're. <laughs> this is your opportunity to ca to stock up for what's going to be a long time away from the city. That's I, I'm kind of. That's the only thing I really need though is better armor. And I think scale mail might be too expensive. I could go downstairs and go get the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide, but I don't feel like doing it right now. I'm Got it right that. beside me. Yeah. It's a player handbook also. Yeah. And I think it's like 300 for chain. And oh you could probably God. get half of that for a used set if you sold your existing gear. I've already got chain mail. I start with it. Yeah. I'm saying to make a payment towards your upgrade. Yeah. The other thing you'll have to consider is if you'll actually get higher armor if your dex bonus is whatever. Because I think you've got like a 15 dex, don't you? Mm, no, I've got a 14. I'm maxed out okay. for what heavy armor would give me. Yeah. So yeah, you're, no, I got, you're just better. I got a twelve. I, I I actually don't really get a dex bonus. Well, I do, but not much. Well, yeah, plus one. Yeah. Where the fuck is items? Yeah, remember my high stats charisma because need that. I think Lotus is actually tied for the highest AC right now. She's got like a nineteen. She's beating me. Elven chain, high dex, and a shield. Yeah, you're paired with me at a 19 right now for AC. How'd you get a yeah. 19? Switching I back to my deck. 19 yeah. because of my splint armor and my shield. 144. Wait, you have splint? Here, if I go, if I if I go to another map where you're all sitting, I can see what your uh, stuff is. I'm Let me go to 14. It was Exile's uh, thought process that. Uh, your hail mail is yeah, no, yeah. rock okay whoa, 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 whoa. highest hail mail is only 50 gp mm -hmm. that doesn't seem right i'm looking at it in the player handbook right now chain mail is 75 it's got a higher ac mm -hmm. scale mail is only 14 chain mail is 16 right so you be splint, like splint is 17 Plate is 18. Shield is plus two. Well, I could go get splint mail. You could go half plate, potentially. Splint is 200. Plate is 1,500. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, guess, yeah I guess I'll go do that. I've got the money for it. I can go get some splint mail. Let me check how much half plate costs. Half plate 750. I think it's a little outside your price range right now. I, I would get a better armor class. Out of uh, splint, yeah, yeah, because splint is uh, 17. Yeah, fucking oh, broken in only this 200 game. G it's only 200 GP for splint mail. It'll be the yeah, yeah. I mean, we could say half plate is half of plate, so there you go. Well, half half plate is indeed half of. Well, it's actually less than half of plate. The I, I, but you can also upgrade half plate into plate. I I would argue. Just buy more of the pieces. Yeah, like half plate is you've got the head, uh, primary weight uh, torso guards, and you've got pauldrons and maybe thighs, but you're missing the lower arms and such. So oh, I'm gonna go visit the blacksmith. I will join you. First things first. You're speaking with Ciro, and you've been brought along. Oh, All right. Yeah, that's we do have to have a conversation. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is everybody back and ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. All righty. So you're continue. You're currently being led through the Seabase Zero. Solved a murder and did some diving. Only you lost half the city's tax revenue. Quite an interesting couple days you've had. Yeah. Uh, not exactly. It was lost gone more of it was there. So. Yeah. Yes. Look, I wouldn't fault you for it, even if you had lost it. It's just life. But a bit weird that it was stolen, huh? No, I traded actually. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the story. Not well. I have good hearing, but not that great. And they wouldn't let me further onto the wharf. And frankly, I don't like trying to hide in public when I don't have to. I have a relatively good reputation in this city. The last thing I need to do is make a mistake and get fu and get fucking in trouble. 
Mm. Well, essentially, oh. we got ambushed by a sea hag once we reached the wreck. Right. Dealt with a sea hag. Um, how about we, how we... About, you know what? How about we hold out on this and uh, we're almost to Mr. Osonum's house and he's going to ask you the same question. We'll, we'll talk to you in just a minute. Fair enough. And with that, you do, over the next five, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, make your way to the Tower of, of Archmage Zill Osonum and soon find yourself sit, uh, seated in the same comfortable living in, uh, room that you would enjoy before. Decorated as it is with all manner of mysterious artifacts from throughout the world. The elderly... Hey. E Not you. Sorry. That's eaten right. stuff that he's not supposed to. Yeah. The, eld the elderly Loxodon Throw something um, at it. sits across from you in an armchair. A very light fire that seems to mostly just be for aesthetics. It's not really throwing off much if any heat crackles in the fireplace. He says, so you've had a very busy week, it seems. Yes, sir. Let's start with the <laughs> first. Zero has a good eye for talent. I like to think mine's even better in many ways. I was impressed at how quickly you made yourselves useful to the city. It's not every day you find people willing to, willing and able to make their way into Ford's Landis and recover an individual. Dead, my but Recover indeed. Only a handful have ever ventured into those ruins and survived, much less without assistance. I'm honestly surprised you didn't speak to me. I had a dawn blade sitting by I would have given to you for the task to make cutting through the undead an easy piece of work. Well, but, my lord, I tap as I tap my silver glaive, this weapon is quite professional not, as well. Do not call me lord. I am an archmage in talents and this... Oh, I a mistake, archmage. Might in a long few days. I understand. To prevent the use of blades. Well, it didn't necessarily have to be yours to weave. But, I digress. I need to know more about what occurred down there. I've heard hail, secondhand, trickling through the grapevine. I do certainly have enough contacts at the, uh, well, within the guard. And they've told me bits and pieces of your story, as well as the state that the body was in. But what was this about a ritual? What was it you interrupted? I couldn't describe mm. exactly what it was I interrupted, but... Spell um, magic that is better left. Basically, from what I remember, a bunch of seals raged in a circle on the floor. I used some of my own magic to break one of the sigils. Didn't quite get a good look at it before we departed, but... Uh, definitely something of the Arcanum type. The city and... Important, even more particularly, is a lay nexus. The veil between the worlds is weakened here. That's why that place has been able to survive so long. A faint tear in our normal reality. A path to the Shadowfell. I've heard they tales of entire companies going missing into warps like this. Hmm. Perhaps you find yourself... Walking the Outer Plains is a dangerous task. The Inner Plains are arguably just as bad. A slip into the Elemental Plane of Fire, you'll be burned alive without much chance for recovery. Water, drown, air, fall forever. Earth, well, you're in a wall. Though, odds are good you won't be. Shadowfell is a twisted mirror of our world. Much like the Fey Realm, Feywild is a... <coughs> Exaggerated anymore. The three inner planes are really one and the same in that regard. It is a blend of death. The fact that. I just. I wonder what would cause a man, grief stricken as he is, to attempt to, at least from my deduction, make that tear burst open. I don't think. Well, part of me doesn't think he was quite all there like he was well his eyes are the what the what check your notes guys if you wrote things down I did but I could be wrong it's been a while
Whoops. Didn't realize there was an ad page to that. Fuck. <laughs> this whole time I've just been raw dogging it with a memory. <laughs> well, for what you do remember, you have the journal of his at least. I'm not sure who is currently carrying that. Is it Corky? No, Roxby. Roxby. I think. Yep, you're right. I got it. <clears throat> Do you want me to hand it over to someone? It's not much use in my hands. I can't read it. What do you have there? Uh, this this book from the guy. He was uh, the guy we had to give a Let's touch to. This. Zill says sure, he's a long kind of study him. This is journal. I've seen him writing and it's... I should... suppose I should tell you that I had worked with Naylor multiple times before. Not as of late. He withdrew after his wife died. Um, there's not that many mag practices of magic, especially arcane magic in the city, or a tight circle. I had assisted yeah. him with some translation recently. And it's right there on the first few pages, as it was before. He never told me where he was getting this message from. I did find it peculiar that it was an extra, extra planar language, but research takes us many places as mages. I'm going to look through this. You see, and at a remarkable speed, clearly someone with a dick memory flips through, reads a whole page, flips through, reads a whole page, at like that speed. It ends over the next... Continues wow. to do... Like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if any of you want to continue talking, he's also mentally capable of that. Yeah, you... Seems any like other questions know. about this? Because uh, we yeah, couldn't read it. when he died? Um... It's time we be a little open about things, isn't it? I heard the description, and I know of your condition, Belgoris. Kitty claws. Kitty claws. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, it's such an inappropriate time. I'm confronting you with this. You're like, ah, the kitty! <laughs> I'm clipping um, that. Yes, please do. Oh. My predicament, as you're quite well aware drives me to do things that would be a, a better not indulged provocation. Indeed. The blood of animals will not sustain you forever. It will grow worse. I've seen this before, certainly. Though your case is peculiar. Maybe because it is a ritual in origin and not... You are not infected. He looks genuinely surprised. He kind of sits back. Slow. Nay, no creature of the night has fed on me and given me, given me its blood. Uh, animals have dealt with a couple of vampires. Mm. Grimalgus left quite a extensive record before his passing. Grimalgus died. You had a different leader before Grimalgus died, like... Oh, yeah, no, it, it, this Grimalgus dealt with all of this stuff. Like, yeah. he was a much more reputable pal than he left all these records for us. Oh, yeah, for sure. Indeed. What was the individual who you were bound to, then? We drank too much like Alice. That? There was mm. no creature. My entire order, it was a... It was supposed to make us stronger. Make us... Better wardens for the people under our care. Double-edged sword, I, I guess. Certainly. And that is why you left the order when this event occurred. I could no longer tolerate what had happened. But based on some recent news from Narrakesh, you may have made the right decision. What do you know? You see Torin's eyes shoot up and meet his dead on. What do you mean? Give me one moment. I have to find the name. 
I forgot I forgot I was gonna I didn't plan on covering this, but it came naturally. And it is it has already happened, so it works. No. The Patriarch of Sinter Scale is dead. And Torin and Spellgorus, you both know the Patriarch, aka the King, was in fact an ancient an ancient bronze dragon who was sat on the throne for basically since the end of the since the collapse. What that, happened? That's impossible. Indeed. A new dragon has taken the throne. What? Spawn. There's been a lot of infighting as a result. It's unclear what happened. Well, they say... Well, I have a few friends there and the whispers are concerning... What are the whispers? The whispers are that a woman came. A single elven woman. Apparently slew the king where he stood. Though only one individual who was present seems to have any memory of this event. The official story is the king died in his sleep peacefully. A lie, obviously. No dragon will die without first feeling the call to return to the blood grounds. For their bones to rot among their ancestors. The new individual is making some odd choices. Apparently, the city is readying itself for war. There's no one woman. Does she have a name? No one gave a description. Fair head, yet dark features. Pale as pale as the moon, dressed in black. It's about the only description I got of her. The individual who told me this left immediately. A certain sixth sense, perhaps, told them of some danger. Since they were right. And I've lost contact with them as well. And I fear I won't be able to regain it. Whatever happens, feels like someone might be tying up some loose ends. And that is again, Belgoros. I ask you, what happened the night you left? Who were you bound to? Were bound to I was bound to no one. I... You are, though. The fact that you can walk in the day means that you were bound to a greater vampire. Probably of a different variety than even you suspected. It's incredibly rare most with your condition would burn in the sun, yet you don't. Most would have no hunger for regular mortal food, yet you do. Your heart yet beats. You still will draw breath. But even now I see the changes occurring. You're darker here than you were when you, when you first arrived. That's a you see. When you consumed Naila, your soul was torn further from the life that has well, brought you here. That man deserved his fate. No doubt. But you must be cautious. Walking that path is a difficult one to step back from. And I fear the only way you would be able to rid yourself of this curse would be to break that bond. The blood bond. The blood you drank that day came from the individual you are connected to. Do you have a name? The only thing I can think of is... Vermantris, uh, but she... Vermantis, but she was... I thought that She's night. never shown any inclinations of being a vampire of any kind. She's... But she was... Was she the one pushing for this ritual? Was she the one who organized it? Yes, but it's... Could they have drank she, the blood of something else and she bound to that? And exactly. them did that she's, as well? Possibly. She's, she's in no way. Maybe she read something wrong. Maybe it was a ritual that has nothing to do with the scenario. Maybe it's something... Oh, something Doris. else has to be it. Take your time. But I do not believe there are many alternative theories at this time. 
All I know is that center scale is readying itself for war against its its neighbors. At least, that's what it appears to be occurring. Things are getting worse over so in that Sir, I must implore. What you're saying is borderline heretical. Are you telling me that some ancient vampire has taken up the helmship of my order? I'm the saying simple it's... utterance of such is an insult to me and everything that I have lived for. But the evidence is there, Balgoris. This man has studied this magic for how long? This specific magic? I'd have to check. Well, no, but... you've, been, you've been Archmage for how long? Oh, this title. Oh, dear. Oh, the better part of 150 years, I suppose, at this grade. It seems he might have dealt with a lot of this stuff before. I have. Greater vampires can grow to command armies, even. But the signs would have been there. Not necessarily. Deception is a great the tool for best these... weapon. They are mortal, yes, creatures. but they require the living to survive. You can only have so many individuals caged up before people start to notice. I have the older, more with powerful. Her. She has taken care of so many. They're incredibly intelligent and dangerous creatures. They play very long games. He may not be the vampire, but she is definitely involved somehow. May I roll a history check? On what? To see if QS might have slight insight. I'm not too sure if she would. Probably the not. The equivalent of you hearing this bell um, is the same as me yeah, hearing the general ahead. attacking Go, go ahead and roll a insight check. Or not insight. It's unpleasant to hear. <laughs> you, you just fucking 19 again. Nice. RP rolls for the win. Mm -hmm. You've heard very few. Fucking show off. You do, however, know of a particular incident that happened during the collapse. In that time, Aleros was racked with war on all sides. The literal terrain was being reshaped as the gods fought one another, and, well, power vacuums were as plentiful as power. In such conditions, a certain vampire, though the name escapes you because I've not named them, once took over control of Stelford itself. The capital of the Alaron Empire, which was still doggedly attempting to survive. It was defeated, but half the city's nobility had fallen under its charm one way or another. That is what ultimately doomed that incarnation of the Empire. Man, we got Castlevania colliding with 40k over here? Holy, like, god damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my brain's exploding from the world wrapping around itself. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to comprehend it, sorry. <laughs> You're good, man. <laughs> you can always keep the keep the uh stream as an archive to come back to. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Good call. But from what your recollection, this is something that has occurred before in history. And that's generally speaking, the older and more powerful a vampire, the greater their machinations can become. Well, I'm not too sure if it right pertains back. to. I'm sorry, but I'll be right back. All right. Yep. I don't know if this uh, pertains to our current situation, but uh, there was a tale that I did read from the First Age during what during the War in Heaven, and where the royal land was being reshaped and all power vacuums was was a dime a dozen. So. Vampire took over. Or, uh, the city was Stelford. City of Stelford. And is the only city that was uh, doggishly still holding on to what little life it still had, but uh, the vampire took over and, and. Was this a female vampire by chance? Not 100% sure. My memory, 
my memory you know, from you know when... that the vampire in question was slain and was confirmed as slain because a several line down heir to the current the ruling kingdom uh well the ruling dynasty eventually was able to defeat it with the help of a large number of compatriots and also took back control however this was after the second age had dawned now OCC when it comes to vampires when they die is it like Castlevania in your world where they fucking explode with all the souls they have consumed not directly or no. is that for not like either. super power is that like just for the super powerful ones who've like it combined their be, magic but... into soul magic kind of a deal it, it, it can't well it can be the act of killing an incredibly powerful being bound to so much can release unpredictable consequences on the world that's what i'm just wondering if yeah it, it would not be like a nuke going off though no no no, no but i mean like more like castlevania where it's like a big bright fucking explosion of souls coming out and something might happen oh well, you kind of a deal it. i've never seen it but i'm just asking it like out of character that's how it kind of works for like power well, character deaths kind of it, a deal it, it could it's it's not likely <laughs> it's like not like okay okay mm -hmm. no i'm just like i'm just trying to like because like you've got fucking you got names out of the witcher and everything else in here so i'm just wondering how everything's working what? if they just burst into flames when they die or what well if they're in the sunlight yeah okay like let's see you stake them is it like they is it gonna... is it like the dracula movie where he like kind of just shrivels over I mean, it's 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 going to depend on the situation, and I don't have a specific like plan for that. Okay. Per se, I um I'm really mostly following D and D lore with vampires. Okay, that's what course, I was just wondering if it was custom or like what are we? Yeah, this is. Yeah. But, Alucard uh... absorbed over eight million souls, and he was okay. I think it was two, but Al yeah. mm. Alucard's also Dracula. Uh -huh. Dep depending on what story you go by, we're not fucking getting into that. <laughs> yeah, this isn't the Helsing universe for God lucky. The vampire universe, Alucard's the one. Yes. So but, uh, yeah, let's let's uh, get back to the story itself. Yes. Yeah. But the vampire uh, in question that I'm telling the story oh, about oh, did gotcha. die, or the descendants of the ruling family. Me with the help of a large number of compatriots, did manage to kill it. I know the tale you speak of. It's an accurate enough depiction, but it really just serves to further the point I was making. Vampires are dangerous creatures, ancient ones even more so. Now, I do not need you to understand this as of now, but. I would recommend not taking that locket to wear off, Malgoras. That's I a good to not do exactly. Well, I, so. I intend to do exactly that. At least until I find a way to free my order from whatever monster has taken hold of it. Let's also hope we can free your soul as well. Exactly. That would be a more pressing matter first. But. This is enough of current events. He says as he closes the book, which you realize now he's been reading this the whole time he's been having this conversation. Yeah, he's just looking been up periodically. Power reading it like nothing. I must do more research on this queen on the Black Throne. I've heard tale, but there's an old myth even by my standards. I've never come across anything like that, so I'm not gonna inquire my own input, so. The best I can remember was the sister of the Raven Queen. But... I can't for the life of me recall her individual name. The Raven Ooh, Queen more. is neutral at best. Correct. The Shadowfell is not a place where souls tend to linger. Those who do not end up at limbo, or are not claimed by a god, or God forbid the hells, gods forbid the hells, might find their way there. Many will gather around the Raven Queen, as do her followers, the Shadow Archai, the Shadow Elves. She's not yes, a particularly... 
Elves are not from this world. You'll find them in practically every world there is. And they're always a goddamn problem. Mm. It depends on your perspective, I suppose. It also depends on their upbringing. Huh? They, the the little bits that we dealt with out where we're from, they seemed fine. More nobility and stuck up, but... And I they don't suppose you've had any particular issues with your fey elven companion. Why would they? Oh, Half the time they're colluding so. together. Well, I was speaking more to you and the whole group is in general. I digress. Other than the fact that she smells of potpourri, no problems. <laughs> <laughs> Cannon. <laughs> they are not quite nobility. I do not have to worry about them. Those are the only people I worry about backstabbing me. Nobles are untrustworthy by their nature. Not all, of course. Quite annoying. That's why I prefer the campaigns. And a man of action. I've never dealt with elven nobility, but the elves I have dealt with are good for oh. Their commanders are stuck up as well. Stand their ground and fight over the smallest thing, passage over a road. It's ridiculous. The Menorah elves to debate for half a century before they make any actionable decisions in combat. Oh, that too, my god. And trying to they get the logistics the online. Down on everyone who lives a less. <sighs> the Incarian ones do. Those from their true homeland on this plain. Still carry the arrogance they held when they controlled every continent. One of my instructors was asked. She was a mean old shrew. Fair, but mean. In any case. But to answer I'll... your question, though, I. I do have one answer for my predicament. It's. I tr I'm trusting you all with this. I'm already in the shit now, but gonna spit it out. If we would've got you out, we would've done it by now. I am... Do you understand what a... Excommunicate Tritoris Paladin? What the hell? I would consider you an Oathbreaker. That is the more guttural term. You've got a price on your head and you didn't bother to tell us? No. The Divine has turned his back on me. Why? Because of... I did not stand my ground. But he has given me a quest. If I can find a... It was a relic, yeah. If I can find a yeah. relic of Helm, to the north. I may be redeemed in his eyes. The Divine, as in Helm. Yes. Your god that didn't warn you of this plot? The gods do not speak to me in that way. I don't think they speak to anyone in that exact way. Maybe no, so an archbishop or a... Right? A high priest of some kind might have some connection to them on that level, but I have never Aldorus, seen one. Are you saying you heard the voice of Helm himself? That's what I'm confused about. Where it shook me to my core. I don't know. It, you went it to could be one of his agents, but I would. They did not say they spoke in his name. I heard the divine. They did not mention his name, but he told you to grab an element of his. No, or a relic, he sorry. Very much, I would assume it was Helm himself. How we should be that? careful when we find name, a relic. If it was anyone else, I would say that... Did he tell you to find the Helm of the Vigilant One? You but, that is it. You see... I believe you are speaking the truth, Valgoris. It is not common for the gods to talk to mortals directly, unless they've been chosen for a specific path. This isn't some trickery by another god, is it? We don't need more problems of... 
archaic scale. The Helm of the Vigilant was a artifact, a very powerful one. Dated back to the first war in heaven. Said that Helm himself wore it in battle, and he was a great warrior indeed amongst the gods. But it was lost back then. Back when the kingdom of the crossroads fell. There were great battles here in those days. Legends, I suppose. Though I would call them more. Poorly recorded histories suggest they are still it is still somewhere in these waters. Do what you can to remember what you were told. And I will see what I can come up with. Your assistance would be greatly appreciated in this. As it stands to re and so however, some new information has come up that must be dealt with first. You remember six days ago now, when I told you my ship would be coming into town midweek? Yes. yes. Seems they, uh, seems the crew did not want to miss tomorrow's festivities. And they managed to get home a few days early. I hope they didn't break anything. No. The ship is in excellent shape. It was there for refits. It is in perfect health now. And as such... That is excellent well, news, Archmage. You will be leaving to the north in two days' time. I could never bear to let the crew miss out on Founders Day. Half of them have never seen it. And you deserve the rest after what you've been up to as well. But that is for tomorrow. For now, you see, as he stands up and walks over to a small table, table, and grabs what looks like a heavy, like, stack of parchment, but bound very tightly in this leather, like, wrap. More. He sets it on the table in front of you and begins unfolding it. I think it's about time I answered. I didn't tell you very much about the, um, ruins that I'm sending you to, did I? No, you didn't. No, you did not. Northwest of Rosania, the jungles are run by Yuan-Ti tribes. There are quite a few of them, constantly at war with one another, and while they control the region, it's still usually safe enough to pass through as they are few in number. One of my associates... What does few in number mean? Unlikely to be encountered. Unless you make yourselves appear to be easy prey. As it stands, one of my associates apparently made that mistake. While hiding from them, he discovered some new ruins poking through the jungle. This is not an uncommon occurrence around here. Occasionally, well, there used to be great cities in these islands. Many of them are long since shattered, covered over, buried. As I said, there were many great battles amongst the gods, too. In any case, he managed to take refuge in these ruins. And being a like-minded individual with a curiosity about him, he took some time to examine them further. And he found something interesting. Well, the ruins themselves, at least the surface, once appeared to have been a Yuan-Ti temple. They were sitting on top of far older ruins. Hmm. Illuren ruins, in fact. He found a door, black metal door, black stone, in fact. Only the alone's build with it, and the fact that it is sealed is a very, very rare find. I have heard of two such events where an Aluren ruin was still sealed. And I know that the name of this one. As he pulls out what appears to be a very large sheet of paper with a charcoal like rubbing on it, like someone had placed over it. The tomb of, of Althra Kanir. I don't know much about that individual, but they were a ruler in this region shortly before they disappeared from this world. If that tomb is still sealed, then the Lurens were fond of putting rather important items, and more importantly, information within their structures. We must get to this before someone else considers it. For it is discovered by individuals like Ekros. But while reviewing these rubbings, which I've had now for some weeks, 
I realized something. And he pulls out another small piece of paper. Generally speaking, each ruin requires a key to open. I puzzled for a long time over where to find such a key. Until, well, as he lays it out in front of the table, you see a round indentation. A complex set of almost stone spokes reaching outwards in a series of etched symbols that, to you, Quirky Scratch, is immediately recognizable as the very watch-like device you carry. QS pulls out her watch from one of her pockets and... When I saw it at first, I tried to contain my optimism as I'd not yet assessed your character. You've proven plenty well what your character is in the past few weeks, hence I bring this now. You notice he's getting a little excited now. Like, you're seeing this, like, spark of energy and enthusiasm in this old man's face. Fate does not bring these things together without good reason. And as you set, and if you set on the table, it is a perfect match. It is a perfect match? It is a perfect match. At least, it, what you see in this rubbing is like the inverse, as if you had inserted it face first into the, into the door. So what am I looking at here, Archmage? What is the importance of all this? I do not know. That's the best part. So there's this broad smile spreads on his face, his ears flick back, and his trunk kind of dangles, dangles and twitches excitedly. You forget, I forget he's an elephant sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> elephant-like. <laughs> well, that's that quite exciting, me. isn't it? Exactly. <clears throat> that it is. Fate tends to bring people together at the right times for the right reasons. We've got strong on a larger scale, with a noble from that region, and a runaway from an order that possibly corrupted, known corrupted by vampires. We've got a cat from the far side of the world, from an academic institution few know exists, who happens to show up at the right time with a key to a very recently discovered tomb. In fact, a tomb discovered after she'd already left her home. And also with uh, certain memories. And we'll get to those. We've got an elf. Showing up from the Feywild with seemingly no explanation. One moon before, a great corruption begins to spread amongst several lands. Not the least of which the Reva would. And you all happen to land on the same day, despite having left on different from different ports of call, on different vessels, in the same port. Found yourselves at the same tavern, found yourselves in the same tavern riot, and the same prison cell, and the same ride to Lord Ekros' estate. Hell of a coincidence, is not it? Just That's lucky, I guess. <laughs> I believe our patron is quite correct. Now... When I don't believe in coincidences, that's the when thing. When you've lived as long as I have, you learn that coincidence has its limits. <laughs> and that is no coincidence, you're quite right. This is strange. Well, the reason why I ended up in that bar is, well, I was looking into things and uh, was being chased. The, the divines have a purpose for us. Almost seems like Shit. it's. Was that the idiot that tried to bowl me over at the entrance of the bar? Hmm. Maybe. I wasn't paying much attention. I was just ready for um a you blew minister. Past me, I come out and I get fucking knocked down there, knocked over by this big ass moron chasing something. I think that probably was me. As QS just breaks out a fucking huge ass smile. Like That's a shit. one way to start a fight, I'll give you that. <laughs> well then, I believe it's time we took a walk back to the port. I think it's time you met your vessel and its crew, which you will be joining. Well, Ciro, are you ready to see your ship again? Well, I saw it in Papa when we were walking by, but yeah, I'm fucking ready, let's go. <laughs> Shall we? Well, he says his gestures. 
U.S. Uh, Nazis agreement. I, I I should have told you this is lore time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where to go but forward. That is true. Onwards and downwards, as I always say. After we get your helm, Belgoris, I think we might have to pay this elf in our cash a visit for daring to desecrate our king. I have better arm answers that I must seek, but you are correct. Vengeance oh. will be had. Seems like this hell might be powerful enough to take them down if they can drop the bronze dragon so powerfully. We can only hope. By now, I guess we start moseying on out. Yeah. By now, the city is beginning to come alive. You come into the city in the, well, mid-afternoon, after another hour of, or so of conversation, because there was a lot to describe in this that we'll say you've said for expediency's sake. The city's hustle and bustle begins to truly reach its peak as the street vendors come out. The smells of roasted meats and other sorts and other foods fills the air. And the streets are busy with all manner of individuals going about their lives. Oblivious to the danger sitting across the river. Oblivious to the burden of responsibility you all appear to bear. But many seemingly recognizing the tall and large elephant-like figure walking with you. With some passing to give sort of reverence to the powerful figure. As such, it takes you only about 20 minutes, despite the crowds, to make it to the harbor. And, and Torrid has somehow ended up with a beer in his hand? Not quite yet. <laughs> Valgoris takes the beer and puts it back on the tray. <laughs> not what? on the Not on the Wait, 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 <laughs> for the <laughs> wait for the festival tomorrow, Torrid. There'll be plenty of drink to be had. How do you even keep that? finding these things? I don't know. We didn't even. We didn't I mean, we did walk past him, but who'd you take that from? I didn't take it from anyone. It was on a tray. A waitress offered it to me. I don't think that was a waitress. I didn't smell funny. I've already drank half of it. I feel fine. Uh. <laughs> Rollicon safe. <laughs> I don't know what you drank, Rollicon safe. Tasted like beer. Someone <laughs> keep an eye on him. <laughs> Turns out it was something called. Turns out it was piss. <laughs> I know. Fine. <laughs> drank piss water. Got Where it. the fuck is it? It's a PBR. Understood. <laughs> Pretty much. Of course. Old Milwaukee. That's enough. You're okay. <laughs> you feel a little queasy, but and you're starting it's to not think that beer, beer, but it was beer. <laughs> Oh my god, it's worse. It was steel reserve. You're, start, you're starting to no. think this but you're starting to think this wasn't necessarily a beer that was being offered. It's you're starting to think this might have been a beer that's been left out in the sun all day that you just drank from a park bench. Yeah. 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 I'm drinking more and it's fine. <laughs> Wait, was it full when you got it? It was about no. half full. No. Oh, that's like someone's like throwaway glass. What? You guys would never survive in the field. <laughs> But we don't usually drink on campaign. Why and not? Case. Also, I normally drink after I get well, done. Paladins. Well, most of us are. There's a couple of clerics, but there's a, we had a ranger or two as well. <laughs> we rangers normally don't drink when we're going to be out in the woods. We need our senses. Don't you have the tavern you brawler feast? You're fucked up. I said, Wally, I am out in the woods. Do not start. Do not start, God. <laughs> I'm about to fist fight this fucking bear. Catch yeah. Him. Well, well, I will say this. There is a drinking competition at on the Ga Founders Day, which is going to be our next session, is basically you're going to be at the fair. So there's a lot of fun shit to try and do for that. Hey, you can use those buff resistance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> time to gamble money uh -oh. to make money. <laughs> yep. Can't wait to go to In any day. case, though, it doesn't take long before you come upon a rather private pier on the far side of the harbor. And sitting pier side, you see a magnificent vessel. While it's not the largest by a good margin, it is still a sizable ship. 
about 180 feet long and nearly 35 in beam. It's difficult to place the vessel in a specific class, especially so given that none of you are particularly well versed in such matters. But the prominent raised forecastle in Sterncastle, while well, her prominently raised forecastle in Sterncastle harkened back to the Carracks of Incaria, the heavy sail plan, simple rigging, and sleek lines definitely sing of a more Alaran tone. Her three tall masts are adorned with freshly furled sails, showing an all square rig. Her main mast is taller than the other two by a considerable margin and features an additional sail as a result. The uppermost sails on the fore or in mizzen are not white like the rest, but instead a rich royal blue, as is the second from the top on the main. Right now, her gun ports are all open. Her guns run out and currently being worked over by several dock crew and the crew of the ship itself, though it's hard to tell who's who as they mix about. Each side appears to be armed with six 12-pounder brass guns, with a quartet of swivel guns in the cardinal corners of the vessel. Not north, south, east, west, northeast, south, southeast, etc. You've got it. You've given us like a small fucking Jesus. And as and as you walk up, to given the... us a frigate. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And as, it, as and as you walk down on on the pier towards the end, you hear her bellowing from atop the deck. Welcome back to the Silent Zephyr, Captain Zero. Oh God! You climb aboard. Zero. You see. You see mm -hmm. a very, you see a very large half ogre standing at the top of the plank, a dopey grin on his face, a little, a little askew sailor's cap atop his head. He's a hulking he's a, form, or a, a little half over eight ogre feet tall. And he like that. I had had fun with him. He's so, almost eight feet tall and easily tipping the scales at well over four hundred pounds. The ship's thick decking creaks slightly under each heavy footstep. His skin is a fair grayish green. And you sure see a lot of it as currently he's wearing nothing but a set of breeches and heavy leather falls folded over in a kind of haphazard manner. A comically oversized cutlass hangs from his right hip. His hair is close to non-existent, shaved close to the head, to the skull. Welcome back. All new friends. Talking to uh, us? He's talking yeah, to Zero. Ah, uh, uh, good, good to see you again. Now ah, it's good to see you, Borg. You hanging in there? Right. Well, it's about all the words you're getting out of for the first few bit. He's a good man. Good I'm dumb. sorry, is the next crew member we're going to meet Morg? No. <laughs> no, I came up with that name just at random. It is not actually connected to any other instance of that name. Uh-huh. You know what? I'll put Zilla Soda about with you, too, because he's coming aboard. But yeah. Uh, where are you, friends? Like, I just have this sitting spot. Zil Osoda, there he is. Yeah. And here you are, towards the silent zephyr. By the way, uh, this ship here is actually built to a larger scale than on in game than the actual one. Oh, someone figured out how the stair staircases work. Accidental, but you can flick it again if you want to go back up. But there you go. Yeah. Actually, what? pretty cool. Oh yeah. Wait, wait. Oh. It goes even. Don't what? don't oh. go don't go all the way down there though. I'm gonna put you back in the deck because I have a whole cutscene for that those two down there. Okay. okay. The only other two named crew members after all. Ah, uh, my crew. bad. Yeah, Borg heads off to go work. You see, in the, on the fronts of the deck, people. Working on currently sanding the deck down as they're going to re, 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 uh, reseal it after a fairly long voyage. Now this, this is what I missed. Love this fucking boat. You guys are going to love this place too. That we're going to have to make sailors out of you pretty quick, I imagine. And, um, I've never. Mhm. Mm well, I'm going to leave you to it, sir. Take care, and don't forget to enjoy the festivities tomorrow. You set sail at the crack of dawn the day after. I'd sleep with a hangover than walk with it. Until next time. Just, uh, take care of souls. Yeah. So, first of all, I spent way too much time on this ship map. <laughs> you see this. Mm. Good job. Thank you. 
Look at it. It's got depth. That was really that was painful because I had I had to manually cut out all of these ropes and the sails by hand. Because that's why they're not perfect if you zoom in. <laughs> it's beautiful. I try. But yes. The ship itself is wonderful. Right, um, let's head down below. I'm gonna show you where you'll all be sleeping. We set up cabins for you. Don't mind the crew, they understand. Um, I'm in the captain's quarters, don't worry about it. And we're gonna have to figure out what you all are, uh, actually good at here. We're gonna see what sort of work we can put you to. Okay, now, if you'd like... <laughs> well, well, Roby might appreciate the help, after all. She usually has to handle the whole crew by herself, and, uh... Well, Tharthan's probably not doing much assistance right now. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think I hear them arguing already. We should probably go meet them. So yes, if you'd like to head below, all you have to do is drag a character up to. Let me do it with Lotus. Uh, and click. You don't actually, you don't actually have to drag it, but yes. Yeah, you can just click, but you know, for roleplay purposes. On the gun deck, you find several other er, crew members. These are all, they're all individual, but they're all just generic crew members. And all. Are you not on this map, Al Gores? Oh, no, uh, I went to another one. Oh, you went he in the folk He went up. Yeah, he went in the folk go? Down. They're all labeled. Go to the gun deck to start. Down, boy, down. And then feel free to open doors, look around, figure out, learn your ship. This is, we're, we're getting Just using my to telekinesis to open doors, don't mind me. I'm trying to do this one-handed. I've got a kitty in my arms. Nice. I knew I heard a kitty. Oh. <laughs> I, I take it. Me. I take it. The... Sacrifice it. Wait, what? No, I should like it. Don't hurt the kitty. Much. Turbius has found his bedroom, I'll say, because it's I the would... one with the oversized bed in it. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, they set the beds up in there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You, the thing you realize immediately is this ship is weird. It's laid out very peculiarly in, in a very peculiar manner. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, we'll get on the ship. In a moment. <laughs> in a moment, Balgoris. We're doing that as a group because I don't want to do it twice. Ugh. But yeah. Down to the hold. Yeah. Let's let's go meet the other let's go meet the other two of the senior officers. We'll head back down to the hold. As you're walking and as you all kind of Oh my god, go back there, Zero. <laughs> yeah, as you as you hang on, these guys are in the wrong position. There we go. As, as you make your way downstairs, and I'm going to bring all of you down there if you're not already there. Pew. Ooh, as you make your way down, as you descend the, sta the stairs into the cargo hold, you are immediately aware of a dispute occurring below. Right in the corner, you... What? I just saw her name. What? Nothing, nothing. Keep going. Keep Is going. it a reference to something I'm unaware of? Because I just came up with that at random. No, I, oh, I thought she was laying to rocks me. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Ruby. It's she's a goblin. Um, Roby. Uh, anyway. Rounding the corner, you're treated to the odd, somewhat odd sight of a dwarf and a goblin in a heated argument. Dwarf is about, about average height with a stout, muscular build. With a large and very well kept bushy red beard flapping about as he argues, his dark blue eyes looking increasingly exasperated. Wouldn't be a. And now Ciro, Ciro shouts over it all. Wouldn't be you two without an argument the second he hit port. What is it this time? And as the dwarf replies, it's. <coughs> kind of stakes a step back, puts his hands up, and gets up. It's. fine. I understand, Roby. I'm sorry I made a fuss over this. Well, thank you. You can have your fun with the boys at the festival tomorrow. We agreed tonight's date night, all right? Yeah, right. And as you kind of round the corner, you're actually tre you're treated to the proper view of Roby. As you finish filling the space and a closer look well, at the scalping Well, that was not the conversation I was expecting to hear out of you two characters. Standing a, f standing a foot sh shorter than her dwarven boyfriend, Roby is, without comparison, the most buff female goblin you have ever seen in your life. Bulging out of her rather, rather simple tire. I'm actually going to show you a picture. Show players. Oh, lady, I ask. 
Let me, let, can, I please, a... can I finish my description, please? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, had, I, yeah. I had a joke there. Go ahead. She, she, Go ahead. she has light green skin, largely devoid of blemishes or scars, save the letters KFE that appear to be branded into the right side of her neck. Her soft amber eyes are angular and pointed, like all goblins, but with a fe distinct air of femininity that's less commonly seen among her kind. Her hair is long and black, tied up in a rather fetching-looking headpiece made out of some sort of green shell and sculpted to look like a small pair of dragon horns joined with a ring. From each ear dangle hangs a complex, somewhat dangly go set of golden earrings, with a small lock of black hair that doesn't quite match her own, and a single size will ruin. Oh, looks like we have a lot of company. Hello. Yes. Are you a practitioner of the Church of Games? God. <laughs> what? Damn it. When you're able when you're my height and you're able to throw half these idiots, it's worth it, trust me. <laughs> Especially when you're the only girl on ship most of the time, it can get rough. But that's what I got Tars in here. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> that introduce that makes me come on, nervous. introduce you no, come on, introduce yourself, elf honey. And you see the dwarf who's kinda like Visibly embarrassed that you walked in on a couple's dispute, like, uh, right, uh, saw some frozen breasts at your, at your service. Oh, they're she like a, a couple? Mm -hmm. They are a couple. Mm -hmm. That saw some frozen breasts at your service at the, uh, what's my words? I'm the ship's quartermaster. My, my girlfriend here, Roby, is the ship's cook. Don't mess with either of us. Very good at our jobs, and we know how to get things done in a hurry. But it's a pleasure to uh, see all of you. We were told there was a new group coming on board that was going to help out. We didn't uh, to get descriptions of the size. He says, looking at the Minotaur and the Dragonborn and the Orcs. <laughs> the fact that he's flanked by two Dragonborn right now. Yeah. <laughs> and there's just a Wait, cat person just peeking, um, peeking around the corner. Yeah. Where's the other Minotaur gone? Where did I put. He he's put him in his. He's, he's, he's in, in his, his quarters. Yeah, yeah he fucking went, went to his quarters and just passed out. Yeah, last time I seen him, he was like, like outside in the water. In War Stories tradition, he is t posing on top of his bed. Yep, he's t posing on the map <laughs> right now. Oh, you can't see him if I do that. Never mind. <laughs> I forget all the sight lines I built on this map. And uh, honestly, guys, if you want to have some more RP, I'm happy to. Otherwise, I'm I'm content to call it here if we're ready. But is there anything you'd like to learn about the ship before we head out? How does I'm sorry, I know this is going to be incredibly rude, but how Doris. Define how. Oh dear. It's like we are referring to how. I'm not trying to be rude, but Oh is they look at each other and start laughing. No. Look. I have seen love blossom in many ways. I am not one to judge. Myself, I have a... I wouldn't... I have a reference for... It wasn't exactly... Look, I wonder what's in this cask here. It wasn't exactly love at first sight. <laughs> but it was pretty I darn wouldn't... close, though. Wouldn't we know each other... We... I'm trying to do two voices. We'd known each other for about three weeks before we started dating, yeah. Mm, more like two, hun. Really? In any case, what? You've not seen the Strands of Union, especially here. The biggest no. issue we've had is, um, well, in truth, we haven't been able to find anywhere that will marry us. I so can... he's a dwarf and she's a, a what? Um, Goblin. If you, Goblin. If you are willing, I know you have freshly met me, but I've seen people married by. We'll talk later. But the biggest, the biggest issue is I want to be. We want our vows done under more, did we both worship the dwarf, the All Father? I have not yet found a priest of the what? Old who is willing to bless our union. <laughs> uh oh. Of course, more of them? Yes. Uh, you know what? The world. Well, I guess I can't judge. He's a I'm dwarf. Gonna just step <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. No, the more the, go the, the goblin who is a worshiper of more than. Yeah, she uh -oh. converted. You see a holy symbol dangling around her neck, in fact. What do you what do you think? There are the worship. Yeah, who are they worshiping? Is that? I'm Morden. 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 The All Father. Okay. 
Yeah. The Allhammer. Not the all Father. All Hammer. Yeah. You said All Father, and then I thought you said Odin, and I'm like, okay. no, yeah, no. Odin's all the All Father. All Hammer. As is Tyr sometimes, but this is not the Tyr of the Norse pantheon, it's the Tyr of the Faerun pantheon, which is not the same god. It gets complicated in D&D. Yes. But, Mor but yeah. Morden, it, is, Morden is the dwarf equivalent of Odin. Yeah, it's the dwarf, it's the dwarf in, like, Zeus. It's the mm -hmm. god of the forge. It's like, it's like Zeus, Don't go Odin, there him and Zeus. fucking Thor. He, he is like Odin, he is not like Zeus. Do not fucking compare him to Zeus. He's he looks a lot like better than Zeus. Zeus. He's a lot better than Zeus. Alright, I'm gonna show you my favorite part of the ship map real quick. This is though. a fucking dick. Mm. Transition to darkness. The lanterns come on! Hey! <laughs> general quarters, general quarters. All hands, batten down the hatches. No! Any battle station. Well, I, I'm trying to get things squared away here. We got a big shipment in, so... Um, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but... Oh, it's fine. I, I would be honored. I am, we... am personally a follower of Helm. If you need oh. an officiator, I would happily offer my services. Um, and the rituals what was your name? The Allfather? You may call All me Hammer? Belgoris Tanesh. Paladin of the Order Bel of Sacred Nash. I'm Roby. Um, no surname. Don't get one when you're a slave. And I never oh. felt like picking one up. So, I am and sorry so to you're... hear that. I haven't been one in a while. Zill got me out of that ship very quick. Well, I got myself out, and then he found me here. It gets complicated, but plenty of time to talk over drinks later. <laughs> I got your name, uh, Goldie. What's your name? <laughs> yes, Goldie. What is your name? <laughs> Blazemaker Torn the Moses of the city. Of the city cavalry of Nogesh. Easy for you to say. Oh, God. You also said your own name wrong. You said Nemosis. Well, You're not a Mimosis. Nemosis? The drink was we him a lot harder. Nemosis. I don't know how to speak. Nemosis. Jesus. You wrote it. I, I, I love... am the Pneumonia clan. And we've got. Oh! Hey! It's not just me and Borg with the green skin over here. We got two other. Well, half orc and a full orc. What are your names, boys? Gresh Forrester, uh, I come from Riverhorn. Wait, and Tharzan sets up, wait a minute, isn't that near Arrowhorn to the east? North of the board? Hey, I'm from Arkenath, hey. same neighborhood. Ah. Uh, uh, Rob is a local. That times are not great up there. I'm sorry to hear that. Let's break it through our walls, so. Anyway, and what was your name there, sir? As we're looking at you now, Rox. Rox, me. Just, uh, <laughs> just helping out a group of fellows here. Seems like it's holy man. Yes, of Odin. Oh. Different father. Different father, indeed. They're from far north, I gather. Well. Right? You're from the far north, I gather, I said. We, oui, yes. <laughs> we'll get a little orc in there, a little wee. We, oui. they're not French. <laughs> they are now. Oh, I don't have a <laughs> See, French orcs, yo. Fuck it. It, it, it's fucking oh my God. No <laughs> French. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Orcish is not French, French okay? Orcs. The orc language is not French. We're not oh, letting oh, it Oh, oui, we are not doing this. The bit of you. We have come to the radio oh village God. and take your women. Oh, oh. This session, this session oh has been so worth the delay. <laughs> Fuck yes. I mean, I'm oh, God. All right. And this um, is what I mean by we're the ninth. Uh, and then we've got, oh, Tabaxi. And are those antlers growing out of your head? Yes. Wow. Okay, that's cool. What's your name? Otis. Okay, okay, scratch. I'm Otis. from Nokas. Nokas? Looks over at You heard that one? He says, Maybe. Pleasure to meet you, Corky Scratch. Not often we meet Tabaxi who aren't from around here. There's a lot of cats around here, but more, mostly they're from the other islands. Interesting to meet a foreigner. Hmm. And then, uh, 
Torbius introduces himself as well, we'll say. Well, um, we have got to get things finished up here so that we can catch our sh catch the th uh, show we were going to uh, get to. So um, it was a pleasure meeting you all, and uh, I'll be cooking for you down here. If any of you are good in the kitchen, I would not I would not mind assistance, especially with the shipping out full capacity with all of you. I have a full 24 to feed. And that immediately strikes all of you as way too few people to man a ship of this size. Yeah, the, oh, the gunnery you know deck alone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Torin, why are you pulling your gun? I am? What? <laughs> yeah, you pulled a gun. No, I didn't. <laughs> and I pulled out my gun. <laughs> it pulls out a musket. <laughs> it's on the hot bar, don't worry about it. In any case, <laughs> okay. in any case, to all of you, feel free to explore the ship. And as you begin looking around after hearing that, Zero knows his confusion. Oh, the ship's very heavily enchanted. Half the shit's automated. We need one man a gun, um, at most. Well, it, you need a couple people running ammo still, but the guns itself will take care of most of the cleaning, loading, and, well, everything except for firing, really. Wouldn't want them to do that themselves. That would be a bit fucking dangerous, wouldn't you think? Um, sail plan two, also enchanted. Very helpful. There's a reason the ship is unlike any other. And speaking of which, I think it's time you guys actually got to see the stat card of the Silent Zephyr ship you will be using. So I'm going to take your ownership, set all players to Observer, and pop it into the Party tab. So you may all look at your vehicle. And there's a long description in description if you want to look out. Silent Zephyr sounds so fucking familiar. I've said it multiple times in the playthrough already, so you probably No, I mean like from something else. Right. Was that the fucking name of the ship of uh, uh, the 40k dude, the Inquisitor? What the fuck's his name? I don't think so. Ifus? Oh. No, the other dude. Uh. The Inquisitor. I don't know. I can't think of his name right now. It's right on the tip of my tongue. He's like really well known. Everybody knows him. What's fuck his name? I don't fucking Can't know. Hey. Huh? Let's start with a K. No. Not it's Cryptman. Not... It's not Cryptman's vessel. She's talking about, uh, God, what is that motherfucker's name? The Radical? I what? know, right? It's the one, one with the, the, the Erebus or whatever? The... No, that's his, Erebus is the name, but it'll come to me later. Remind me later. He's got a friend, and his friend is a, got a spaceship, and I, I could have sworn maybe that was the name of it? I don't fucking know. It was something like that. Zephyr <laughs> no. or something. The Silent Zephyr, Zephyr features a distinctly Alarian style sail plan with three square rig mass. The foremost features a main top sail and top gallant with while a flying jib and inner and outer jibs are somewhat of a an out of place, place head sail along the bow spirit. A main and top mast stay sail and main top gallant stay sail span between the foremast and main mast. The main mast itself is noticeably taller than the foremast or the mezzan mast and features a main Royal, in addition to the standard three sails. Wow, this is a fucking fast boat. As with yes, the fast, yes, it is. It is oversailed. It very this you we have a redoubtable with less guns. Is what we have, as with the mm -hmm. gap between the fore and main mast. With a congratulations, pair of you have sails, Millennium Falcon. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a was on steroids minus the guns. Uh, the mizzen and main mast. The mizzen mast itself is equipped with a gaff rig spanker. Jesus. Fucking a square rig top sail and top gallon. Okay, just so everybody understands, if we have the wind, this okay, thing read the will next like sentence. read the next sentence. You're not done yet. Finally, studding sails are employed on all three ma <laughs> all the three mains, top sails and top gallons, although they are not pictured in the maps. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she's fully rigged like victory at parade. That's crazy. Oh yeah, remember. As Zill described, he spent a very, very uh, high premium for such a unique vessel. The enchantments are low. Canvas would require a larger amount of crew to operate. However, our lovely Archmage employed both wizards from Ereketh and his own talents to enchant much of the rigging, allowing most of it to be handled from the main deck by a much smaller crew. By most metrics, the Silent Zephyr is an overpowered ship. However, it is a unique combination of structural features, meaning it is still stable in all but the most extreme wind conditions. And if you were to sail a ship 
Oh my god. Sail with all up in such weather, you would have far bigger concerns than it being unstable, as in we'd rip the fucking masts out of the deck. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's that much power, these things would go flying into a continent. Yeah. Augment you have any mobility <laughs> provided by such a heavy sail plan, the, unique, the ship's unique copper clad. Ooh! Is an experimental feature that adds immense cost to the design and is already proven to prevent hull fouling and consistently low drag through the water. Now, copper plating also provides additional armor to an extent. And also, also stops um, fucking worms from eating the fucking bottom yeah. of the hull. Yep, no ship worms. The ship's shallow draft allows it to enter shallower water. It, it's literally a wasa with victory rigging. What the fuck? Into shallower waters than most ships of its size that hope to manage, but it is still too large to take up most. Okay, so it's not a river frigate, but a damn near is almost. It's, it's, wait, wait, wait. It's, Read the fucking got a armament portion. We're undergunned. Yes, oh, we yeah. are. Yes, we're said. undergunned, but we have m the, heavier fucking the guns. The yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whatever. This thing gun to the you seventh broadside. Gun forward to the current battery. There are two forward cabins on the gun deck that are removed and additional could be added. The four scale deck is reinforced to accommodate a pair of long nines similar to chase cannons as well as additional two sixes pounders to each broadside. The poop deck is also suitable for mounting a pair of stern chase cannons as well as two more six pounders on the broadside. The main deck is suitably spacious to mount seven six pound guns on either side. It would be very heavy at that point. You would be losing some speed with that many guns, but it could be done. You could upgun that. Would bring us, that would bring us up to 36 guns per side. Correct. We could literally fight a fucking, like, That's a Wassa, ladies and gentlemen. We are literally a Tricomerly plus some. You can fit up to 44 guns all in. We're a Wassa. <laughs> You're literally a Wassa. <laughs> you can turn this bitch into Queen Anne's Revenge if you want to. Jesus Jesus Christ. That's what I'm getting at. I lost. Yep. <laughs> I told you I'd be leaving you guys with an interesting ship, and that your first one was going to be incredibly shitty. Mm-hmm. And then you leave us with something worth trillions in the modern day. <laughs> <laughs> Zill's a very wealthy individual, and he spent a good chunk of that on this vessel. Like, just so everybody understands, it's just something, like, a king would have as part of his escort. This would be literally his flag. Well, One no, it's them. not a warship. No, it would be bigger. It'd First be way rate exists in this setting. This is a third-rate pursuit ship. If a pilot would be a third-rate. It's currently unrated because of its armament. Mm -hmm. Regardless, it is capable of being a third-rate, so I'm calling it a third-rate. It's capable of being a fourth-rate. Based on the two, the Dude, base 44 the gun. The gun, 44 deck. gun. 40. <laughs> That's 36 guns per broadside. Okay, yeah, it's a fourth rate. No, it's 20 guns per broadside maximum. Yeah, but. They're also, they're also, remember, your main armaments is only 12 pounders, and you can only add six so pounders a, up top. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I know, I know, it, I know. It can be a fourth rate. Yep, yep, go back to sleep. So how much can we upgun it? How many more guns can it be upgunned? It, it, it currently only has 12 guns. It can carry a total of 44, including two bow and two stern chasers, and 20 broadside. You can fit a total okay. of eight 12-pounders per broadside, and you can fit um, 12 six-pounders up on the upper works. I, I tripled the... I, my brain read 14, I think, when I said seven. I think that's what happened. Yeah, it says <laughs> add a seventh, not seven. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's what happened. Hey, what is? I was a little me? confused there. I was like, "What the yep. fuck?" Oh yeah. I was like, bro, what do you mean? Well, shall we leave uh, these two to their duties and? Yeah. Yes, yes. My, my apologies. Look, look, again. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, the the metal I room in front of you is the magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I I, I opened that door and I saw it and I was like, oh, found the powder keg. Yeah, I put a lot of thought into this ship. But... I can see that. I gotta leave in like 
four minutes. Well, we are wrapping up today's session. You can close yeah. out your streams, and if there's anything else that we'd like to do before you finish, the all so level fresh up water up stored up front. Oh, that's about it. Oh. And you're oh all level God, six. Yours. What? Um, oh, no, no, let me let me do my leveling shit real quick. Okay, what do I need to do here? Well, it's probably easier if we do it at the start of next session. Yeah, um, we'll yeah I mean, I've it. got I've got like four minutes, and I'm a fighter. It takes like a minute. I just have to do my health. That's it. No, I'm gonna right. be doing something very Six specific, level. so I'm gonna wait until I gotta decide which one do I put the point into. You I'm can thinking paladin. Uh, not... hmm? Your god is not answering you right now. Okay, oh, so shit. No, no. Yeah, you're right. Fuck. So what well, do I get? Attack for me. Yeah. I get I get a again again, I, I need to figure out I've not actually leveled up players directly in this. I haven't figured out oh, how okay. it worked. I need to find out. That's why I'm saying, as of Wait next session, session, you'll be starting at level six. We'll do that at the beginning of next session. Then we're gonna have a nice, nice day on the fairgrounds, and uh, yeah. The city uh, ba, 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 ba. All right, and we'll close there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of this session of D and D, mainly RP, but that's all right. Ooh, this is Tristan Longshot, signing off.